Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push out lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on the bigger banquets. This that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth A in here. Extra fruit, the brain. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but This grand, I'm blessed with a great hand Amongst many that stink And yeah, it took some hard work But blind love play a huge role And they say that it don't When they feeding you fool's gold And if I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know with not a doubt while on the globe and even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to come Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world All that stress ain't saving me fear though I swear to God I'm trying But they pushing their demons down my esophagus Screaming the easy life, what I want all the ways Praise made up holidays, tell me that love is the answer Just to boost this economy Buy more, sell now, but I ain't following I ain't a hollow man, I'm full of them fall winds Take it all with a tall grin And if you feel it, do it with me and just sing what the song says Take it all for what it is It ain't all so big Take it all for what it is Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, SB. <laughs> I hope y'all are having a terrific day today. Um, it's a fabulous or uh, a good Friday, like I always say. And guess what? We're going to keep it like that. Y'all know what it is. It's Freestyle Friday. And we are definitely going to have a good time today. Y'all know what I'm going to do. I'm going to recap my week. My audio is off a little bit right now. I'm trying to get it straight, but I hope y'all can hear me. Um, you look good. I look good in red and black. Y'all like red and black. Hey, I do look good. I just seen it in the camera. Oh, I like that. Y'all know I promise y'all red for this this month. Um, it's, I think it's Heart Health Month for women, and also it's it's Love Month. Y'all know that, you know. So if y'all got y'all a sweetheart, if you ain't found you one yet, y'all got a couple of days. Go get your sweetheart and make sure you love on them, man or woman. Make sure you love on them for Valentine's Day. That's such a made up holiday, guys. If y'all got to wait to the February 14th to show somebody you love them, you're falling off. Go get you somebody in between the time and love them every day. Really? Come on now. We can't be waiting for no particular day in order to um, <laughs> in order to say I love you. It needs to be every single day. But anyway, I hope all y'all can hear me just well. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a uh, outstanding week for me. I've actually had a slow week, but it seems like this wasn't like last week, y'all. Last week I had to download. This week I'm feeling a little energe energetic. And um, I'd like to just thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for hanging out with SB Nation. Thank y'all also for making sure that I got to 10,000 subscribers. Me and Mr. Boss are planning a definite um, <laughs> celebration for that. So uh, listen, we're going to do some things different. And yeah, it's coming. It's definitely coming. We got to work on some things, but I appreciate y'all all for being here. Definitely. I'm going to say hello to a few people. Before I say that, though, I'm going to let y'all know that um, the uh, what we're talking about today, we're doing recap. We're going all the way back actually to Saturday. Y'all know on Saturday night, I was with Austin. Austin is the passport bro that, it, bro that everybody's concerned with. He's a 23-year-old man and he's doing his thing. But we're going to recap that. We also going to bring you into Monday night. Monday night, it was me and Black Band. And I want to give y'all an update on a little bit of stuff. And then here comes, I didn't do cruise season on Wednesday night, y'all. I didn't. So, 
So we ain't got so much to talk about, but we're going we gonna to get right into it, though. But before I get started again, I want to say thank you for you all being here and thank you for supporting SB Nation. I'm going to say hello to a few people in the chat and I'm going to get going. But first, 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 I want to say this. I want to first say this. Tomorrow, we're going to continue on with conflict resolution. I got to tell you all this, but we're going to have the ultimate guest for the conflict resolution on tomorrow. Guess who it's going to be? It's going to be TLA. <laughs> the lead attorney will be here tomorrow with me. It's just going to be he and I. And of course, I want y'all to be there because we're going to be, he's going to be answering some questions. And when he answers those questions, he's going to be uh, resolving some conflict, y'all. We're going to have a, a good conversation. I don't know yet if we're going to do an open panel, but we're going to definitely be having a conversation. And we're, it's continuing. You all are here. I'm glad that y'all still with SB Nation and supporting SB, but let's just get started on this thing. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I almost forgot. Let me say one more thing and then we're going to get started. There was a young man in the comment section on Saturday. His name was Mike Johnson. <laughs> Mike, if y'all don't know Mike Johnson, tell Mike Johnson to come over to SB Nation. I have an apology for him. Now, those of you who have been with SB Nation from the beginning, y'all already know that SB has a bad left eye. I'm just going to call it a bad left eye because y'all know that I have a contact in my left eye. I've also mentioned to you all that I suffer from dry eyes. Now, a couple of things y'all might not know, because if you're not ever on this side of this camera, you might not know this. I have lights all around me, beautiful lights that, you know, Mr. Boss does it well so I can come to you all with this outstanding presentation. So I have lights all the way around me. Now, we're going to add the lights, the dry eyes, and the contacts together in a two-hour show. So by the time you get to the two-hour, uh, the time sp <laughs> the time slot of two hours, SB no longer can see. <laughs> now, let me, let me clarify that for you all. I can see, but it's all blurry. So on Saturday night... Mike Johnson was actually Mike Jones. <laughs> and I continued to call him Mike Jones and nobody corrected me. So I guess everybody around me was tired also because nobody said anything. And also, I just want everybody in the comment section, y'all know from after a certain time, I don't read comments because I have the dry eyes. It's like a blur. So I am apologizing, apologizing to Mike Johnson, and I am going to get it right, y'all. I'm going to get it right. So forgive me, Mr. Johnson, for saying your name incorrectly, but I am taking accountability for what I did, my era, and I'm telling you why. But welcome to SB Nation. And those of you who've been here for the whole time, y'all already know. But those of you that are new to SB Nation, I just wanted to give y'all an, an extra piece of SB. Thank you so much for being here. And let's just get started in this. Setting the record straight network. SB Nation, you got it right. We five stars over here at SB Nation. Lady Navoa, how you doing? It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Dare Long. Dare, I checked out your live today. You kind of confused me a little bit, but it all in all, it did really well. Thank you so much, though, for asking. You, you get five stars for that. Emils. Mills. Good evening, Mr. Boss and SB. Thank you so much for being here. Dr. Steele, hello. Blue Universe, what's up with you today, girl? I hope you're feeling good. It's Good Friday, y'all. We started this thing on Good Friday back in 2022, and we're going to continue on with a Good Friday. Bloom and Ebony, I love your Instagram today. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. You like the blazer, Daryl? You, you feeling this? The other one I had on the other day, Mr. Boss, it came off kind of red, kind of orange. This one's more red, but... Thank y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping with this. You know, I'm kind of trying to, y'all. I'm trying to. Lost in translation. How you doing? It's good to see you. Sugar Bum, what's up, girl? What you looking at? Hi, Sugar Bum, somebody was calling out your name the other day. It was so random. I said, Lord Jesus, Sugar Bum over there too? I mean, it was real random. I can't even tell you where it was right now, but it was random. But Obviously, you blessing folks with your with your lovely uh, personality. So thank you so much for being here with me also. Cars, cars. How are you, sir? Ronnie Ron, what's up? Fifi, Fifi, I love your comment early today, girl. You own it. Seven and it's good to see you. Definitely. Tisha, what's up? What is going on with y'all? Let me see. Let me see the ring. Let me see. Let me see what that says. Let me see the ring. It's so shiny. There you go. 
There you go. Now, listen, y'all, I didn't, th- I didn't start off with this 27 years ago. I had to work my way up. <laughs> But it's good to see y'all. Mr. Graves, it's good to see you. Thank you. Why the nightmare cases are insufferable. What nightmare? What are you talking about? Bria, what's going on, girl? It's good to see you. Shells, how are you? All right, guys. It is so good that you all are here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here this time. You know, every moon maiden, what's going on? Listen. We always get it started slow and then we just kind of jump right into it. But I am so glad that you all are here. I get to call y'all out. Y'all already know I don't do a whole lot of calling people out while the show is going on. I be connecting with my people. Bethany, hey, I be connecting with my people. So I don't even get into this comments too much as the show goes on. But if I definitely see you and Mr. Boss highlights and you getting a shout out, you know it. We love you. We're so glad that you're here. But if all is well, if y'all know Mike Johnson, tell Mike Johnson to come over here. SB owes him an apology. Definitely. Let him know. So anyway, we're going to get right back into it. So on Saturday, y'all know that I was uh, had a lovely guest. His name was Austin Holloman. Austin was good for me. I met Austin initially over on the cruise season a couple of Wednesdays, I think, before that, maybe one. But anyway, Austin kind of puzzled me a little bit because um, I don't I didn't know much about the passport bros. And I'm not going to tell you I do now. Y'all already know that I'm getting such mixed messages from the women and from the men. But either way, Austin kind of puzzled me because I saw him differently. I know Sugar Bum, I kept saying, Mike Jones, <laughs> Sugar Bum, look, you got me, girl. I'm, I'm apologizing. I'm taking accountability for what I did wrong. <laughs> Mr. Howard, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Why, Sugar Boy, where was you at? Why you didn't correct me? I thought you, see, I, I, I'm used to having you right here, but that day, I don't know where you was at. Sugar Boy, damn. You know I read your comments. You just left me out there that day, I tell you. But anyway, I met um, Austin, and I thought he was a nice young man. He's a 23-year-old man, not grown man, but 23. Not completely grown mind, not completely developing all that good stuff. Y'all know it. But anyway, um, he offered, oh, he didn't offer it. He uh, came to the show. We asked and he came to the show. And I think we had a very good, uh, you know, interview that day. I wanted to have more conversation, but it was good. You know, I, what, you know, what are we going to have in common? He's 23 and I'm, mm. so anyway, he answered my questions though. And um, I got so much pushback from that. You know, it's kind of weird. And I'm thinking like, why are y'all having issues with Austin? So let's just play this the way that it's been coming towards me. Um, if Austin was 23, living here in the United States, living in Dallas, Texas, or uh, wherever he lived in Texas, he would be dating several women, I'm assuming. He appears to be a good-looking young man. He seemed to have been an entrepreneur in a very thriving business of barbering. I think that's a business where you can make lots of money, especially if you're doing them units. Y'all seen them men units? Have y'all seen it? Ooh, so good, y'all. You ain't got to be bald no more. Although my head, my man is bald and I like a bald head, but I'm just saying you ain't got to be bald no more. But anyway, let's get back. So he was in a thriving business and a business that he could make a lot, to, lots of money, like I said. But anyway, he would be here. He would be dating. And I don't think anybody would have an issue with that. I mean, if they did, I would wonder what that issue would be. But um, so he decides that, you know, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be in Texas anymore. I want to be abroad. I want to be in Brazil. So he says he gets over to Brazil and he loves what's there. He loves it. He actually said, when I got to Brazil, I realized that this is where I wanted to be. Wanted to be. Brazil changed my mind. I was like, wow. He didn't say a woman. Now, right there, I wonder why is it that we can't just accept this man for who he is? Just, just accept what he says. Just, just accept that. He saw Brazil, whatever it was, if it was them, them beautiful women, that, that, that climate, whatever it was, he liked it. He enjoyed it. He was like, nope, at 23, you know, he can actually, you know what? He wasn't even 23 then. I would say at 21, he can say where he wants to be and it should be okay. And he said, I want to be in Brazil. I'm like, okay, go for it. I promise y'all, if I had a son that was that old and he told me, ma, I want to go to another country. I want to explore. And I'd be like, what? Go ahead, buddy. Do your thing. I would be so happy. I would be so happy that he was so eager to find out more, to broaden himself, to be a smart man, to, to just to be not scared and want to be under mama. 
Did y'all hear what I said? Just to be a man and be like, look, I'm going out here. I'm, I'm, as long as he asks me for no money, go, go, explore. Now, I hope by the time he got 21, I would have taught him everything that I could as a mother. You know, protect yourself. Be smart. Don't be no fool. Those type things. You know, I would have taught him that. And then at 21, if he says, Ma, I got to go, I'm going to do this. Even if he said he was going to the military, I wouldn't be sitting back. Baby, baby, you can't go fight no war. No, go. Pray about it and go. <laughs> That's what I would do. I, I want a rough child. You know, y'all know I'm a man. I want the man. I don't be wanting men. I, I want that musty. Y'all know how I be saying that, right? <laughs> I want that musty man. I want that real dude. I don't want that, that one that, mm -mm. <laughs> no, go. Be a man. Find out what's out there. Be smart. Use whatever we have given you. You know, don't be no fool for nobody, but go ahead and explore. I don't want that one that's scared to leave the house. And if you got some of those that are scared to leave the house, then what you going to do? He's 21 years old. He's ready to explore. Go have a good time. And when he got there, he started dating. Dating women just like he would have done if he stayed here in Texas. He would have dated women or young girls. You know, and that's what he's doing. But for some reason, it just, it just, it's not sitting right with us, with some of us actually. And and the, and the message I'm getting is since I am God, I, I am from God, godly beliefs. And that's what my principles and foundation are built on. I should be not even dealing with a such young man like him, like Austin. How could you do it? How, how could she? Because I believe in men. I believe in what men were created for. I believe in the gifts that God gave me from the beginning that have nothing to do with me. So that's how I can support what Austin is doing. And besides that, I have no idea what Austin is doing personally, if it would be any different than anything, any different than any 23 other, any 23 year old man would be doing right here in the States. I don't think so. I think it's probably the same thing. He just has a different woman that he's entertaining. So until I hear something different about what Mr. Holloman is doing, or some sort of tr tr uh, trouble or negligence or something he has gotten himself into, I'm going to support the young man. Meaning I ain't sending him no money, but I don't care what he do. <laughs> he better be smart. It's the same advice I would give him if he lived here. Now, I wouldn't want nobody sexually going out to do some sexual tourism. Who does that? Now, because I've been hearing on the flip side, I, some, some of my girls... Some of my married women are traveling to Jamaica and other towns, excuse me, and other countries and getting their thing on, y'all. I saw some pictures. I saw some pictures, y'all. I saw some. And these women are enjoying themselves. Now, y'all understand, a single woman is a single woman. She can do what she wants. But we talking about married women, too? What? Sexual tourism. Now, I bet they ain't the ones doing the talking. I bet they're not. But I'm not going to even compare that to what Austin is doing. Because you know what Austin told us and something else that we need to just accept is the man said he's not coming back. That means he's now living in another country. He's living. That's where he wants to be. It's just like if I picked up my bags right now and decide to move to Texas, I'm going to learn Texas. Now, he has not yet decided to. Uh, choose a country that I know of. Uh, initially, he wanted to be in Brazil, but you know, things didn't work out. It didn't work out. So I don't think he's decided yet where he wants to be now to call home, but he's only 23. So let's allow him to do that. And if something should happen to Austin to make his situation not good, I'm sure we'll hear about it. But until then, can we just stand behind him and just say, listen, be smart, do your best, you know, don't be no fool. <laughs> Can't we just do that? Because he's still a young man. He's only 23 years old. It's just like I would tell my son, I'm right here in these United States. There's certain things you don't do and certain places you don't go. Now, he's at a huge disadvantage because he doesn't know all that. But from what the conversation he and I had and from his videos, he's learning the language. He's learning the culture. He has someone that is helping him along a young lady who actually knows and she's actually the person that sits up the tours and and guides him and takes him around. So, I don't know what y'all talking about, y'all. 
and and I may not need to know, but for me, this is why I'm supporting a young man because as of right now, he's doing what he wants to do. And from what I'm seeing and what I know, there's nothing wrong. Now, maybe he's been a little too transparent with you all because it sounds like y'all didn't know that young women in their 20s were having sex. But guess what, guys? Young ladies in their 20s are having sex and they're quite liberal with it. They are. They're not asking their mamas. They just, y'all know, they're just doing it. So my question to you all, or my advice for the ladies here, I'm dealing with my ladies here, is I'm saying to you all, we need to preserve ourselves because we're not going to be a part of the sexual liberation anymore if we are expecting to get different results. Right? If we're expecting to get uh, different results. And I'm telling the woman, the women overseas or, or in the different countries, wherever. And I'm not, I don't even know who I'm speaking to. But if someone hears me and they are thinking that, oh, Austin's going to take advantage of me. I'm saying to you to protect yourself, preserve yourself. Just like I would tell the ladies here, you don't have to be liberated in that area. You don't have to be liberated at all. You could be a woman. But you know what I got to thinking? Y'all might can help me with this. You know, we talk about a lot that over in um, those countries, the, the, the dads are there. Their their culture is family. These women are groomed to be wives. And if that's the case, I'm, I'm feeling like the daddies are close by. You know, the dads are pretty close by and they are monitoring the behavior of their daughters. Have we ever thought about that? Has anybody ever thought about that? Because it seems like we're painting a picture that these women have no fathers and no family and they're just all after Austin. And Austin is just manipulating the whole situation and breaking them down and getting what he wants and just leaving them. That's that's the picture that some are painting. But uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I would think that there are some fathers there that are monitoring the situation um, that may in some cases, and I think Austin mentioned this, may in some cases have their own agenda. What do y'all think about that? You know, I don't know. But I just wanted to give y'all a summary of what my thoughts were. I want Austin to protect himself. If there are some people out there that are trying to use him, um, I hope it doesn't work. I hope he's not getting himself in any trouble that he uh, didn't plan for, you know. But um, uh, any, uh, any other thing, you know, let him date. He says he's not ready to be married, but he also said he's not coming back here. So he's he he's considering wherever he is home. It's no longer Texas. So I would think that he's moving just like he would if he would be here in Texas. So I hope y'all understand my position. And, and from now on, you don't have to make no more videos about it. It is what it is. Austin going to be who he is and SB going to be who she is, too. OK, OK, so I hope y'all understand me and got it. That was Saturday night. We're moving on to Monday night. Monday night, me and black man, we just continued on with the conversation, but we added a couple of things. This is the part that we added. We added value. Nurse Fancy, how you doing? Nika the accuser, how are you? Wow, that's a name. <laughs> Maybe I didn't see that right. <laughs> Nika, uh, the accuser. Hey, so listen, our NKA. NKA, the accuser. Uh, that's interesting. That's a name. It's good that you're here. Thank you for being here. So getting back to on Monday night, me and black man talked about Austin again. And we talked about how uh, we going against them. You know, you got women over here. They're doing the sex tourism and they enjoying themselves. They're getting their groove back. Y'all know about Stella. And, you know, y'all know about girls trips. Nurse Fancy, didn't I tell you about them girls trips? Look, I told you about that. But anyway, I ain't know they was married. I don't know why I didn't think that married women just. Anyway, we talked about that a little bit. And we're understanding now that there are individuals on both sides that are tricking. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you call it. They're tricking. So um, I'm not going to even talk about it. It is what it is. You better clean up your life. You got a whole husband at home and you decide to go to another country to be mm, pleased by another man, that's that's not good, ladies. It's not good at all if that's what you participate in. Sugar Bum says, what? Sugar Bum, Passport Bros teaching us how to travel cheap. <laughs> you know what? There was a young man on there that said that he had some um, some international travel uh, 
hookups, I should say, uh, ways that we could go travel for an inexpensive or a less expensive uh, amount. So Sugar Bum, you might be right about that. I can't remember the young man's name, but yes, he is there. It's pronounced in car. Okay. Thank you. Oh my, in car. <laughs> I really messed that up. <laughs> Thank you for that. You know what? I needed you here on Saturday. I was calling Mike Johnson, Mike Jones the whole night. And Sugar Bum, she just let me do it. Yeah, Sugar Bum, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Elbert Choice, how are you? Just dropping, just dropping this here off. Just dropping this here off. I see it's already happening, y'all. So um, thank you so much for your $20 super chat. And you get the money line. Money. I'm going to run it every time. time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Money line. line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you, Elbert. Before I go on, though, um, lots of translation. I like what you just said. He says, Passport Bros are going overseas going overseas to find a wife these wives are going over these wives are going overseas to forget um, <laughs> forget about their husbands listen um lost in uh translation i used to think that too i used to actually think that that was what a passport bro was but it's more to it than that because we have these younger men that are 23 24 years old they're not ready to be married and um far as Austin goes, he said he's not coming back at all. So he's just basically, I mean, he's saying that now. I'm sure, you know, he's born here. And I'm sure it's going to be some differences that he may come back and visit or what have you. I don't really know. But he says he's not living here anymore. So it's a little different. I, ultimately, he will find a wife and he probably will be married and have little babies, hopefully. But I think now a lot of them, they're telling me that it's not even about a woman. It's not about a woman. It's just not here anymore. They just don't like all the liberalism. Some of them have been, have uh, grown up in very conservative conservative households. I was just thinking about that. Say you had a dad that was in the military. I had someone close to you in the military, and and they, you know, they went all over the country all their young life. So you have that in you. You're not used to being in one place. I'm not saying that this is Austin's story. Now don't don't get me wrong. He didn't tell me that. Danny, Danny G, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. But anyway, uh, I too thought that it was about finding a wife. And for some, the older men, a lot of them have come forward and said, that's all they've been doing. And they've been living there 12 to 15 years and it's been successful and their wives are good to them. All of that. So I believe in that too, because, you know, I believe in the nuclear family, but, you know, I don't think all of them are going for that right away. Right. So let's just hope that they find their way in whatever happens, happens. And if, you know, if the intentions are not good, no matter where you are, if your intentions is not good, you got consequences you're going to have to deal with. And let's just let that be that way, you know. So, you know, we're moving on. But anyway, Black Man and I on Monday, we talked about something. And this is very important. And I need y'all to understand this because I've been getting a lot of, not so much pushback, but I've been getting, having a lot of questions because I talked about a woman uh, preserving herself. And I mean that, y'all. I mean it. Um, because I'm learning in these spaces, the gender war is over and it was never going on over here at SB Nation anyway, but it's over and I'm coming, it's coming out now that, um, I'm going to call it what it is. I think it's manipulation, but they want to tell me it's manipulation on the woman's side. And I'm saying, no, it's manip manipulation on the male side. And I'm going to tell you why. And not all are participating in it. Some people actually understand very well what I'm saying. And I'm make sure that everybody here now understands what I'm saying. But before I do that, I need y'all to get these likes up. Okay. Now, I usually don't ask for nothing because I be into talking to y'all. Y'all know I like to talk right now. I usually don't ask for much. Y'all know I don't be asked for no money. I don't, but I, I love it when y'all support the show. I don't ask y'all to go over there and buy my gear. Not no more. I just want y'all to have some five stars shirts, but you know, y'all can still go over there and do that. But anyway. I'm the one that don't ask for much, but I got to have y'all get them likes up. I got 86 people in here and I got 52 likes. And I love the way y'all hit that like button just a minute ago. So don't treat me like that. Even if you don't agree with everything I say, I wore a red jacket for you all. And I got on a black turtleneck, red lipstick. Mr. Boss back there with the sound effects. 
Can't y'all give me a thumbs up for that? No? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please Daily give beloved. me a thumbs up for that. Y'all hear Daily Beloved behind? Come on, y'all. Let me know that you're listening to me. I appreciate it. Oh, y'all, I'm going to tell you something else. Mr. Boff got me some new earphones. He said, I got me some black ones now. But guess what? I have the funny ears. I'm going to tell y'all something else special about me. I got funny ears. None of them like to stay in my ear. So if I'm doing something like this, I'm actually keeping my earphones, my earplugs in my ear because they don't stay. But, you know, he got me some black ones, though. He actually got me some black ones and some blue ones. But anyway, I just want y'all to share that with y'all. I'm going to let y'all in on a lot of stuff that I'd be doing over here. Prime time, how you doing? It's good to see you. Congratulations. I'm going to tell you that every time I see you. But anyway, thank y'all. Get your likes up. I appreciate it. Y'all didn't have to leave because I asked. Little Plastic Spoon, how are you? So anyway, we're going to get to it. This is a serious matter right here because I need people to on. Scarlett, how are you? Thank you, Scarlett. Scarlett says, I love this content, but I sometimes need to be reminded to hit the Scarlett. Me and you, you my sister, because I'm going to tell you something. I could be looking at somebody all day and forget to hit the light. <laughs> Look, be loving it, loving it, and still forget. It's just me and you, though. <laughs> we good now, though. I'm going to have to remember this. This is bad. A uh, little plastic spoon, what you say? What you saying? I might hit the dislike. Look, I always have one. It's okay. Why would you do that to me? But it's okay. You know, it just makes me better. It makes me work harder. It's okay, though. So anyway, y'all, I need y'all to listen. Scarlett, we here. You and I understand each other. I tell, I'm, I'm beginning now to understand what's going on. And, and it's not looking good for me. So I'm, I'm going to try to do some reprogramming because I understand that there's some programming that's been going on that may not be so helpful to our community. The one that y'all say that we don't have. Hey, Clement. The one y'all say we don't have. Okay, so... It's 2023, and what I'm doing now is I've already told y'all about Wife Ed. Wife Ed is coming, um, and it's going to be on Fridays at 11 o'clock. And all you ladies that are interested, I'm going to put out an announcement really soon to give you all an opportunity to tune in. Hey, Cora. Um, so I want y'all to do that. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bringing value. I'm bringing value back to women because it seems like we are missing. We are missing it. Now, I've been learning a lot being on cruise season on Wednesday nights, um, a lot of things. And, and understand this, I'm not stupid. I'm an older woman, but there's nothing new. Y'all are not doing anything new than what we did. Understand that. Nothing new. Uh, as far as the guacking, uh, salad tossing, and all those things, all them tricks, toys, whatever y'all got, somebody before y'all did it, made it, created it, you know, and all of that. So it's nothing new. Understand that part. But what I'm noticing now with this sexual liberation, women are losing their value left to right. And, and it's almost like we're just a piece of nothing. And I don't like that. I'm a woman. I feel like I'm an asset to my husband. I actually feel like I'm an asset to the darn world, whether y'all know it or not. Y'all might not see it today, but maybe y'all, maybe, maybe not. But I want every woman to feel that way. I want every woman to feel like, you know what, if I'm this way, somebody will appreciate me because that's a big deal. Because when we're not being appreciated, we're losing, right? We're losing. You know, we're having children and we ended up being single mothers. We're, like they say, we're being evicted. This is true because we don't have that balance. We don't have that help that we need. And I'm not going to blame anybody but the people that are involved. And that's the woman at this case, in this case, because I, you don't have to be sexually liberated. And all I'm hearing, all I always hear is, but this is modern times. This is what the world is doing. This is what this person is doing. This is how it is. Your ideas are, are old. My ideas work. Because what's happening is you have men over here and they're telling you that I want a traditional woman. I want my woman to be this way. They want women that they can actually adore. But really, let's just keep it all the way real. Can you adore a woman? that you know that has given everything to a man that she is not married to or that she's not even in a long-term relationship with? Can we do that? Can we adore a woman that may be participating in golden showers because her favorite city girl did it? Can we adore that? Can anybody adore that? I can't even have a good conversation with you if I'm looking in your face and I'm thinking for one moment that this is something that you're indulging in. 
Now, understand, if a city girl wants to be a city girl, it's going to take a whole lot more than me to change her mind. So I'm not even talking to them. I'm not. I'm talking to the women that want to be wives, but maybe just caught up in the world transition, you know, the modern time where this is what's necessary. And we're listening to the things that are going on on social media and our girlfriends and other people that are saying, oh, it's OK to do this. Or the men that saying you got to do this. I'm talking to those women that are just a little bit confused and out of touch with what they really are. Right. I'm talking to those women. So. When I say what I'm getting ready to say, I need for you all to hear me, the ladies. I need for you to hear me because this is this is the standard I'm getting ready to hold you all to. And this is, again, only if you want to be those type of women. I talked to black men on Monday about a woman being virtuous or, or, or virtue. You know, when we say that, a woman does not have to be a virgin to be virtuous or to have virtue, Okay. To have virtue is just have a high moral standard of living. High moral standard and principle. That's what it means. I myself have high virtue. I say that because I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't wear short dresses. I'm very conservative. I respect and follow my husband. I'm a married woman. So, um, Miss Belinda Thompson, how are you? They do not want virtue. They do not want virtuous women. Really? Now, see, Belinda, I'm, I'm glad you stopped me there because I want to say something. Where there are city, uh, city girls out there, there's going to be enough. They're going to be modern men for those uh, city girls, too. And I'm not talking to them either. So you're probably right. Though They can go on over there and play those games with those women that don't want much. Right. I'm talking to the women that want to have value, that want to be married, and that want to be wives. And those women I'm talking about, they're saving themselves or preserving themselves for the men who want to be leaders and authority and husbands. I'm talking to a different set of people. Now, I know y'all like, oh, no, SB, this is not happening. No, it is. Because back then on Monday, I told him I'm getting all kind of calls and emails from women that are saying that they're interested in what I'm talking about. Can we have a consultation? Can I talk to you about this? And all of that. I can say this today. Now, y'all, a year ago, I couldn't say that because there were no women in my in my lives. Nobody was talking to me. What no woman talking to me? No, no, no. They was running away from me. I only had men, you know. But now I have ladies that are interested, ladies that are in trouble, per se. You know, ladies who don't want trouble, but they really want to be married. Some women actually want what I have. They actually want what I have. And I'm going to be the example for how to get it because I went through all that for you. All the things that you don't have to go through because I did it. I'm willing to share with you and tell you how you can be a virtuous woman or a woman of high virtue. I have you want to say this is someone that moves with moral principles, high godly moral principles. She don't you don't want no a man wants to adore his wife. I can't say it anymore. So in order to do that, I have to carry myself in a way that people can see me and see that there's something different about me. I don't have to scream. I don't have to yell. All I got to do is be a virtuous woman. And guess what? That doesn't mean that I'm a virgin. Now, all the pushback I get, this is how it goes. Oh, uh, you want me to, to, to love and be with a woman that's loose, a woman that's had a child? And I, I didn't say any of that. I didn't say any of that. All I said was, you can't be a virgin twice. So once you've lost your virginity, and y'all know what that means, right? I lost my virginity when I had sex with a man. He entered me. I received something from him. I'm no longer a virgin. You don't get to throw me away. You don't do that. Now, I lost my way. I would agree. Now I'm being accountable for what I did, but I'm going to get it back. So I'm going to preserve myself. Now, this is only the women who want this. Now, if you want to be a city girl, you want to keep busting them down and letting them do whatever, great green, gray showers or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> salad tossing guac walking whatever you want to do you do it you do it stay liberated girl stay liberated you gonna stay in a uh, <laughs> you gonna stay confused also but i'm not my eyes are wide open and i see exactly what's going on 
So for those ladies who want what I'm talking about, I want you to learn to preserve yourself while we're doing that, because this is the question that was asked. It's beyond understand what you're saying, but but why why they're preserving themselves? What what are they doing? How are they showing that they're wives? Because we're learning and, and we guess what? We're being honest. We're learning. We're being honest. We're showing you we can cook. We're showing you that we can clean. We're showing you all these things that a wife should be. Ah. Uh, Excuse me, Miss Belinda, Miss Belinda Thompson. How are you again? You say they are very low morals. Who are they? Are you talking about men? Maybe you're right. Those men that just want to have sex with a woman with no intentions. You're right. Your audience of men are not of high value. Of have whoa, Miss Belinda. Uh, we're gonna drop the link because I want you to come on up and say those things so we can have a conversation. Because uh, if you're following SB Nation. The men that follow me, I would say you're wrong about them. They they do. Guess what? They may not be perfect men, but they are men of high value. I didn't say high value men as in money. I'm not talking about money right now. We're talking about the virtue, the way they carry themselves, their morals. They're not perfect and neither are we. But guess what? If you hear the SB Nation, you're trying to find out something. So I would love for you to come up and express yourself to me. Because with the name of Belinda Thompson, that tells me you're of age and um, you're saying a lot. And I want to agree with you. I disagree with you. I want you to tell me where this information is coming from, because I don't put anybody. I never talk in absolutes. I try to separate as much as possible because there are people that don't want what I have. I agree with you. Um, but I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to continue to read your comments. I'm going to keep going. And then when Mr. Balls drops the link, I would love for you to click to cam up and come on up and talk to me. We can have a good conversation because that's what I'm about. I'm not about arguing and going back and forth, but we can definitely have a conversation. So anyway, getting to these women, ladies, I want you all to preserve yourselves. And the question that I'm having is, well, what are we doing? Now, first thing is a woman is cleaning. You know, let me, let me say it like this. If she's found a man that can appreciate her coming to him and saying, listen, my intentions are, are, are to be a wife. I know I don't want to date a man for long term. I want to be a wife. I want to um, preserve myself until I get this ring or until I'm married. And he's saying, what are you going to do? I'm an adult woman. I will cook dinner for you. I'll invite you over. I'm living in my own apartment. You come to my home. It is clean. I'm going to dress well. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to respect you. I'm not going to fight with you. I can't show you submission because you're not my husband, but I can show you the utmost respect. You will see in me that I'm an adult woman and I'm meek. You know, I'm modest. I have no, I'm, I'm honest, you know. And then once we get to the vetting part, I will even lay all of my, <laughs> everything I've done out on the table for you. You will know who I owe. You will know who I pay. You will know how much money I make. We, I'm going to be an open book because this is what I want. Now, is this what you want? And if he says, yes, this is what he wants, then that's when we actually proceed with the, the dating. And then I promise you guys, if a man wants that, it won't take long. It will not take long because, you know, that's what he's looking for because he already has his mind and his intentions on finding a wife also. And yes, and Basically, all y'all got to do next is find out, do y'all believe the same things? We're looking for compatibility at this time. And if that's the case, then the vetting starts. So if he understands you, ladies, and he understands that you're preserving yourself for a time that a man can come and marry you, then that's that's what the most important thing is, because this brings back value to you. And if this man is telling you in the meantime, look, we got to have sex before I ask you to marry me. I'm t I'm, I need to let y'all know something, y'all. That is not the man for you. Let him go. Let him go. Let him be with whomever he wants to be with. Don't be mad. Don't be upset. Don't feel like you lost something or left something behind. Keep going because he was not the man for you. I promise you it will be fine. It will be fine. So excuse me, y'all. That, that's a big part of the pushback that I've been getting. But I want y'all to know virginity and virtuous are not the same thing. You can definitely be a woman of high moral high moral principles and have made a mistake in your past. The problem is, or what we need to do is account for the problem, change our mindset, get some principles. See, look, we, we're pushing for excellence. You want to have an excellent moral character. You don't want to be out here lying, tricking, 
uh, sneaky leaking, smoking, going to strip clubs as a woman. I wouldn't say as a man either, but I don't tell men what to do. I talk to women. That is not someone that is showing virtue. It is not, y'all. I'm sorry. It's not. You don't do everything or you, you don't participate in worldly things and say that you're a virtuous person. You don't do that. That's not what it's about. So again, it's a changing of the mindset. And if a woman wants to participate in that, a man has to respect that. And if he doesn't respect that, he will simply move on. And it's fine. There's no love loss, but there's no manipulation either. Now, the manipulation comes in is if the man doesn't respect her wishes or her saying, listen, I'm intending on being a wife and I'm working towards that. So I'm not having sex with anyone. So if he doesn't respect that or he tries to make you feel bad because you are not a virgin or whatever the situation is, ladies, it's OK. It's really OK. Allow him to go on because we're bringing value back to us. We're not going to continue to let people tell us because we had a child or because we're not a virgin anymore that we're no good. So if and I'm not going to even let you put a dollar amount on who I am. If you don't want to be with me, it's OK. I'll wait. I'll wait. So that's what that was about. A lot of men, believe it or not, understood. They understand what I'm saying. And this is that's a part of wife ed. Wife ed is going to be just like that. Now, y'all going to keep people are still telling me that's from the past. It doesn't work. But guess what? It works. What y'all doing right now is not working. You're not getting married. He hasn't proposed. He's still having sex with you. Uh, who knows if it's protected or unprotected? Who knows how many people he having sex with? It, are we even asking these questions? Do you even want a man that has multiple partners? Or do you even want a woman that has multiple partners? Men, I don't know. You shouldn't. You know, do you want a man or woman that's partic participating in walking? Do we want that? Is that what we really want? Oh, gosh. So um, the black the black Muslim says, SB. Tell them just because they see him as a husband, they can't say no to him until marriage. What? Wait a minute. Let me read it again. SB, tell them just because they see him as a husband, they can't say no to him until marriage. Them, them, them foe sleep with, I see that's a, mm, they will sleep with Ray Ray because it's been a year. Laugh out loud. You're trying to say uh, because they have not, had sex in a year, they'll go sleep with a Ray Ray. See, listen, black Muslim, understand this. I'm talking to women who are serious about becoming wives and y'all continuously want to put up people or bring in, interject things that don't apply. Okay. A Ray Ray and all these insults that we give, Pookie, Ray Ray, insult, insult. A man that, we're just going to call them men that don't want to be married. Men that don't want to be married do not apply. OK, so Team Fatty says these new born again virgins are hilarious. Team Fatty. There we go again. At extremes. I don't even believe in born again virgins. I don't believe in that. I do believe in women having value. I don't think I ever said anything about being born again. See, see, this is manipulation. You're trying to make a woman think because she's not giving away her box to the next one that says she likes her, that she's got a problem. No, you got a problem, Team Fatty. You got the problem. There's enough women out there that wants to be city girls and liberated for you to sleep with. Leave the ones alone that said no. Leave them alone. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. It's okay. Go to the next one. Sherelle, exactly. Go to the next one. See, that's manipulation. It is straight up manipulation. I'm going to teach my girls how to recognize this stuff when it comes. We're not doing that. They want grown men that want to be married, that want to be husbands. And if that's not you, it's okay. It's damn, it's darn okay. <laughs> Y'all going to make me say, damn show okay. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> it's okay. That means that those people are not for you. But don't knock it. Don't knock it. Just be like, you know what? These women, she's she's telling me she's got, but she absolutely got value. Guess what? Should they be calling out dirty D's? Should we? Should we be calling out dirty D's? No, it's not our business. We don't even care. We're talking about adding value back to us. We have enough women that are out of control, fatty. 
how are we going to get this thing back together? Don't you understand the chaotic way that we behave is directly tied to our vagina, our box, our behavior. It all is tied together. If we didn't have all of the dirty D uh, stuff <laughs> within us, we wouldn't act crazy. We would be better people. So it's time to turn the clock back, get back in order, and act like we got good sense and become better wives, become wise, period. And then maybe we'll get a proposal. But as long as we out here playing these games, hmm, we're not going to get anything. Does Amber Rose have value? I, I don't know Amber Rose. Amber Rose is the one who on the head, right? Is that Amber Rose? Mr. Boss, is that Amber Rose? You know Amber Rose is a city girl. She doing what she want to do. Again, extremes. Don't deal with Amber Rose. And I was going to call some names. I don't want to call no names because I don't want somebody to think I'm, I'm talking about your neighbor, the girl that live in your neighborhood. I'm not talking about somebody who is on TV to make a point. I'm talking about the girl next door. I'm talking about your cousin, your little sister. That's who I'm talking about. How about them? Clement, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. SB, let the scriptures do the work for you. Those who follow will get the results they are looking for. Hey, but how about that? Those who don't want it, leave them to their tree. Leave, leave them to the tree. <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be streets. <laughs> Clip it. Listen, I don't, you know what? <sighs> Not everybody knows that, Clement. So we have to put it in plain English. But they always want to go on extremes. I'm not talking extremes. I'm talking about your neighbor. I'm talking about your little sister. I'm talking about the kids that are in eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade right now. That's who I'm talking about. I don't want to do the extremes anymore. Mr. Blackwell, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. Reform 304s only change when they get too caught up. Can they really become housewives? Again, I don't know. I didn't go extreme with 304. It's Mr. Blackwell. Let me tell you something. As a man, you find a wife, you choose your preference. You the person that decides to be with that woman. If that woman is not showing you the characteristics of a wife, then you don't be with her. This is not a game. You're making the decisions. If in her mannerisms while you're dating her before vetting her, she's not showing you what an adult, mm -mm, a responsible adult wife looks like, then she wouldn't be the one you choose. But it's still up to you. It's still up to you. It is not, nobody can, I can't make that choice for you. I can't decide for you. Well, is her house clean enough? You know, has she uh, preserved herself long enough? You have to make that decision. If she's a 304, what made her a 304? That means somebody was sleeping with her. You know, that means I can't make her sleep with anybody. She has to be the change woman. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Y'all think I'm joking. I'm telling you, the mindset has to change. You all have to identify with this as men, as leaders, as husbands. You know what a wife looks like. You should. If not, that means you're probably not in the line to be a husband. So I'm holding you all responsible for the woman or the women that you choose. You know, can a three or four really play this game? Because it ain't one. This is a life-changing situation. It's life-changing. I'm now cooking at home. I'm now exercising when I never did it. I'm now being honest with you, so honest with you, I'm confessing to you what my thoughts are for that day. I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I'm being vulnerable with you. Can you handle it? Man, can you handle it? Because I'm, I'm coming to you with it. You know, I'm telling you things that nobody's ever told you before. I'm making you feel a certain way that you never felt before. I'm giving you something you never had before. Can you handle it? This is the wife. I'm telling you how I can follow your plan, be submissive to you and do those things that you need. But if you don't hear that, I may not be the one for you. Can you handle that? But understand it's totally up to you. I can't tell you what woman she is. I can't tell you because she was a 304, she's no good. I can't say that to you. I can't tell you, you know, it's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. So I hope y'all understand what I mean. Totally up to you. Mr. Boss has dropped the link. I think I had a super chat I need to read. I don't know for sure, but I hope I answered y'all question. But guess what? We're presenting a new woman, DMAC. I really hope these sisters listen to you. I hope they do too, DMAC, because guess what? 
we can change this thing around because I believe in the nuclear family. I believe in marriage. I've been married 27 years. And let me just say something, judging, just, just basing it on some of the things you all are saying, not you, DMAC, but some of the, the comments and the pushback, the extreme things that I'm hearing about the 304, about the one with several kids, this loose woman. I've never said anything like that. I'm just simply talking about a woman that's not a virgin anymore. Just simply talking about a woman that's not a virgin. You know, why we got to be so extreme, y'all? Are you telling me either I'm a virgin or I'm a 304? <laughs> and what exactly is the number that we uh, put on a 304? Is that five? Is that six? I don't know. I have no idea. But guess what? Every time you decide to have sex, men, every time you decide to have sex with a woman and you have no intentions, you probably are creating to that 304-ish. So again, I'm only talking to women because I, I want my my men to be the kings and the, the the men in authority, the leaders. I want them to want the women that we have here, this women, this woman who wants to be a wife, who wants to be married. Well, it's time to turn this thing around, but y'all really don't want to do the work. It sounds like y'all rather argue, I rather fight, instead of just accepting what I'm saying. Accept what I'm saying. Lucasley, thanks so much for your five dollar super sticker. Thank you, thank you for being here. Also, it's good to see you. Y'all don't want to accept what I'm saying. Listen, I've been in this platform a little over a year and a half, and I've been getting some crazy. I, I'm, at this, I'm at this crossroad where I'm not understanding this message. I'm telling men that this time for ladies to get some value, this doesn't have anything to do with you. Nothing. Nothing at all. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I'm talking to women. It's time for us to be valuable for our men. I'm telling women it's time for us to get ready for the men that are out there that want to be husbands. If I saw and heard anything, it should be smiles and like, SB, you said it. They need this. This is what this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. But guess what? You ain't saying that. You want to say, but what if she's this? But what, what, what they got to do with anything? I don't know what she's going to be. It's still going to be your preference. It's still up to you to decide what type of woman you want to marry. You know, whether she's one that went to what wife Ed or not? All right, Fetty, come on up here. Hello. How are you, sir? How are you, Miss? I'm doing well. Happy Friday to everyone, by the way. I hope you guys have a nice weekend. Yes, sir. Miss Security Boss, yes, we sir. are not telling you that you are doing something wrong. Okay. I'm going to say we with the manipulators, right? We are saying that. Women and men have uh, opposed synthetics when it comes to sex and to relationships. We want to get the most sex without giving resources, and women want to get more resources without giving up sex. Like, this is literally the opposite, right? So when you're saying to a woman that gave herself for free to seven guys before, or to three guys before, to hold up the sex and to say, I only will give it up to you if you put a ring on me, a.k.a. be willing to split resources with me and take care of me and of my kids and etc. That's literally manipulation. That's that's the uh, carrot and the horse technique. When you put the carrot in front of the horse and the horse is going to try to get the carrot and he's going to walk miles and miles and miles and miles until he gets the carrot at the end of the day. I know you're trying to turn... 304s or promiscuous women or women that are around into wives. But the problem is that that will be at men expenses because men shouldn't give it up full prices to you on used cars. If it's a 2023 BMW, I will pay it for sure because that's what he deserves. But I'm not going to give up a 2023 price to a BMW that was made in 2012 and has 350 miles on it. 300. 50,000 miles on it. How is that manipulation or controversial? Okay, so I'm going to go back to the beginning. You said, and this is something yeah. I did not say, I'm speaking to women that are not virgins. That just means that a woman had sex before. I don't know hmm. if she had one partner or 10 partners. Who knows? I don't know. I'm speaking yes. to a woman that mindset has changed. But I'm going back to the part you said about free. Uh, she has given herself six or seven times to a man for free. Whenever a woman lays with a man, it's never for free. There's always an emotional attachment that that woman carries, whether she's an accountable for it or not. There's always an emotional attachment that that woman will carry with her for life. For well, life. Unless there's, 
emotional. What do you mean? What I mean? Just listen. Don't. No. What about this man? Listen. You said that she is giving it away to six or seven men for free. First of all, my person doesn't have a value on it as in money for free. But going forward, noting that I've slept with three, you said seven men for free. I don't know what that means, but there is an emotional attachment because we are receivers. We receive everything that you have done in your life as a man when we lay with you. That is definitely, no, no, you can't talk to him done because I listen to you. Get your finger down. You misconstrued the point. You didn't understand the point. Fatty. 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 Let me say this and then you could correct me. Okay. You said that she slept with six to seven men prior for free, meaning she gave herself to these men for free. So in other words, she gave them sex for free. And I'm saying to you, anytime a woman sleeps with a man, it's never for free. But it, we need to take more time to learn what a woman is and what a man is. And when we do that, it will make more sense. A woman is a receiver. When men ejaculate in a woman, they are receiving something. It is very much spiritual thing. It's a very much mental thing. You are screwing with her world and you may not know it because it may appear to be free because there's no money attached to it. But I'm going to move on. Then you mentioned that kids and this and that. But let me just tell you what I'm talking about because you didn't hear what I said or maybe I didn't make it totally clear. When a woman is dating a man and she has come to him and said, listen, I am dating with intentions and my intentions is to be a wife. I've done this. I've done that. We can go over everything I did and I've taken accountability for those things. And if we want to use your words, I slept with six or seven men for free, but I'm no longer doing that because it has messed my head up now. I am going to be a virtuous woman and I'm going to hold on to my virtue. And with that, I'm going to be a woman of high morals. I'm not going to drink with you. I'm not going to lay with you. I'm not going to sell myself for you. I'm doing none of that. You're not, I'm not going to walk with you because I am preserving myself for my husband. And in the meantime, if that's what you want, man, to be a husband, what I want you to do is this. We're going to date I'm an adult woman. I'm going to be living in my own house. I'm going to be paying my own bills. I'm going to be driving my own car, but I want to invite you over. I want to cook dinner for you. I want you to see how I'm living. I want you to see that my apartment is, is clean. It's, it's affixed. Everything in it is that of a wife. I'm going to have conversations with you that lets you know where my morals are. You're not going to see me in short skirts. I'm going to be very conservative in my speech to you and my speech to anyone. I'm, I'm going to be an honest woman. I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I'm going to tell you exactly how I'm feeling. So you're going to know that this woman right here is going to be a wife, whether it's yours or not. Now, you have to make the decision yourself whether you want to do this. That means that you're ready to be a husband. And you may not be. You may not be. But the manipulating part comes in is when you say to her, if you were to say this, Girl, you've been a 304 all this time. You've been, you done gave it up to six or seven men before me. And now you're going to try to be a born again virgin. That is manipulation because now you are getting in her head because guess what? She did sleep with six or seven men before you. And she may not totally be in the place of being a wife. And she may need the leadership of a man that's a husband, that's a follower of God. That's a God fearing man to lead her the rest of the way. But I'm going to give you what you want in a wife. But sex is not going to be involved. So, sorry for the interruption. I just didn't want you to move on because you didn't get my point. When I say for free, it means that the man that came before me got her for a Burger King and a movie ticket. The man that came before me had relationship with her on the back on the Toyota Accord. The man that came before me met her at the club, got some drinks, took her home, did what he had to do, and left her alone. If her standards were dead for 10 years, that's usually what women are doing right now, right? I'm 33. I'm very accustomed to it. Women are doing that since 17 to 29. And then all of a sudden, they wake up and they want to be a beautiful wife with a beautiful house and a beautiful family. But the problem is now you are coming with me. You are coming to me with something with standards that you never used on your life and you are applying to me and making me that is supposedly the man of your life 
paying 10 times, 20 times, 30 times more than all of the men that came before and got you for nothing. So when I say free, it's not about the woman, it's about the man. Because I'm a man, right? You talk for the point of view of the woman, I talk for the point of view of the man. And that's manipulation. Because if you are using the sex to get commitment for me, you are manipulating me into getting into a relationship when you didn't that do that before. So we talk about clean up mans all the time. Oh, she's a step. She 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 has a baby in hand, but we are going to be a good guy and we're going to take care of her. Oh, she was a 304, but now she now she learned a lesson and we are going to clean up the mess. Men shouldn't be clean up men. They shouldn't. That's the reality. What we should preach is. Don't have sex if you don't want to have the consequences later. And I'm not one of those. And I'm not. I, I am one of those. You can do whatever you want. I'm just saying that for a man to pay for used box prime value when she never charged it before is calling yourself a sucker without understanding that you are a sucker. And that's my opinion. Okay, so everything you said was made up. You gave me a bunch of what ifs. All of that was a bunch of what ifs. I don't know nothing about what you just said. All it is is what if she did this? What if he did have sex with her on the back of the car? What if he took her to McDonald's? What if this is you said all of that? But what I'm saying to you is none of that matters because it's up to you as the man to make a decision if you want this woman. If you don't want this woman, you can go back to whatever woman that you can continue to have your what ifs with and have mm. sex with her in the back of the car at McDonald's, uh, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. But what I'm saying is this woman here is coming to you with her intentions. She's laying it out to you. Can you handle it? And there's nothing manipulating about it because you, as the man, do not have to participate and if you're a man that don't want to get married, then you won't participate. You'll go on back to the city girl because there's going to be plenty of them out there. But this particular woman I'm talking about, that's not who she is anymore. I don't care what she did. It's up to you, though, to decide if you want to deal with this. You do not have to. You don't. And absolutely, I believe in redemption and I absolutely believe in grace because she, too, would have to have grace for you. Because if I go on the what if, how many kids you got? Zero. How many women you done slept with? Not you, fatty. I'm not talking about you. I'm saving myself from marriage. I'm not I'm talking about you. Oh, God, you just messed that up. I'm not talking about you, but I'm just saying, how many kids you got? How many women you done slept with? How many boxes you done ate? I don't want that either. I don't. So now what? So how many diseases you done had? How many STIs you done had? Since we being vulnerable, you know what I mean? So all of that comes into play. But what I, I, but listen, I'm not talking about you right now, though. I'm, I'm trying to make this woman whole. In general, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make this woman whole. I'm trying to build up the women. I'm trying to change the woman. And guess what? If a woman has had too much of the world in her, she can't make the transition, fatty. She can't do it. Oh, she and absolutely it, can. No, she cannot. Not the woman I'm talking about. Absolutely not. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. You. She I don't believe the Listen. I don't Kim believe Kardashian at least. I don't know anything about Kim Kardashian's sex lifestyle. I know she's been in a video, but that could have been one of the four or five men. She may be only been with five men. I don't know, but I ain't talking about no Kim Kardashian. I'm talking about your cousin. I'm talking about the woman lived down the street from you, around the corner, nieces and nephews, real people. Go ahead. My cousin has more bodies than Kim Kardashian. Ab oh, absolutely. But no, look, listen to this. Security boss, listen to this. Listen to this. I like stats, right? I like stats. The average woman is married at 29. 29. Two, nine. Okay. She's been sexually active probably since 16 until 29. She will come to us with bodies. That's the reality. There's no, it's not the if. I'm not making this theater. Like, if I gave her seven bodies, she's almost a virgin. She's in pristine condition because these women are coming to us with 30, 40, 50, and they say, oh, only five. We talk about this all the time. So, Daddy, I don't care. Listen to what I'm saying. Well, I, I you, you got your city girls. You got women that love sex just as much as you do. I'm not debating that. 
I'm not even arguing that. I'm telling you what I'm saying is part is women who want to be a part of an exclusive club because not all you all, not all men want to be married. Not everybody wants to be married. I'm talking about women who want to be married. So that again, you going by stats. This, listen, this world is jacked up right now. You know that. So we're, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to keep it jacked up. I'm trying to make some changes and it's not going to include everybody. It's only going to include people who want to be a part of it. And again, that may not be you and it may not be the women that you have in your mind or what we see as the ideal woman that we're seeing today. It may not be, or it may not even be the majority of the women that we're seeing today. I agree with you, but the ones that will do it will be the ones that I'm talking to. And it's not, you know, it's an exclusive club and it is very manipulating for you not to allow them what they're, you know, allow them the space and time to do what they're doing without being said. I'm sorry. I I agree with you on the part that I don't have to stay. I don't have to accept. So, so this is my last question, right? And I'm trying to, for you to see this from a a male point of view, right? And I'm going to ask you a question and I hope we are, uh, you are going to be honest about it, right? I'm going to give you my opinion. I, I don't want to put this on your son, but your nephew, your nephew, right? Right. Imagine that your nephew is 31 year old, 31 years old, is looking for marriage. And he comes to you and he says, Auntie, I met this woman. She is 30. She had three boyfriends. She told me that her body count is 27, but now she's ready to change her mind. Let's not let's again. Let me take the 27, 17. That's realistic. 17. Her body count is 17. And I'm uh, she told me that she wants. To ch- like she changed her mind. She's a, a born again Christian. Whatever. Let's put a religion. And now she only is willing to give herself for uh, to give herself up if I put a ring on it. Would you think that your nephew would be accepting a good deal when that woman never had those type of standards, and now all of a sudden she wants to come with seventy bodies to him and say, "If you, you, I will only give it up to you if you put a ring on it." And I believe that you don't believe in prenups, so. Sign on the dotted paper and we're good to go. Would you tell your nephew that's a good deal or that he's a sucker for accepting a deal that none of those 17 men accepted before? I would say to my nephew, what do you think about this young lady? And then you also are saying it incorrectly. It's not that if you marry me, you get the box. It's I'm waiting for my husband. I'm waiting for a promise to marry. It ain't got to be you. It ain't. See, that's the part that you're missing. You still have a choice to decide what you do with your own life. She's not forcing you to do anything. But my question to you is, why you got to have this box? Why don't you go on to the next box? If this don't seem right to you, like my nephew, I would tell my nephew, sweetheart, if she done had 17 and you don't want to be number 18, keep going. But if you think this woman is sincere, bring her over here and talk to her. You want to be number Yeah, he wants to be number 18. He's just asking me. If, if, if you want her that bad, Huh? You think this woman is that good? Bring mm. her on over here. Let me talk to her and let me see where her head is. And then you know what? I wouldn't want to do this, but I may ask him, "What kind of man are you?" I wouldn't want to because I wouldn't want to know too much about my nephew, as far as his sexual, you know, behavior. Yes, one body count. He'd be saving himself. He's a really know. nice man with a really <laughs> nice job and a really <laughs> nice. I wouldn't want to know. I'm like, no, that might be too much. But I would say, uh, oh, I would tell him to bring her on over. I would ask him how much he cares about her. It wouldn't it wouldn't be based on what she's done because I don't know. Again, this is a what if. You gave her 17 and the stats show this and this and that. It may not apply to that particular woman. I don't know. But I would want to know why he feels this way about her because it shouldn't be that hard for you all to discount women that you don't want to be with. Y'all should be going in. If you, you know what? I ask and tell men all the time, make a plan. If a wife doesn't fit into your plan, then you don't want to be married. You know, it, it doesn't need to be a second or third thought. It needs to be a thought as though you're making a plan. Like, I'm going to do this at 20. I'm going to do this at 30. My wife and I are going to do this at 35. That's how it needs to be. And if you don't have a plan for your wife, you might get set up with anything. Because guess what you shouldn't do? You shouldn't be out here playing the dozens and end up with a baby mama and 18 years or 21 years of child support. That's what you shouldn't do. So I'm just saying to you, don't don't think that you're giving up your leadership and your authority because I'm telling a woman to preserve herself because I want you to have more leadership and more authority. I just want that woman to be good for you. 
Because it sounds like you're saying to yourself, are you feeling as though you're giving up something because this woman is becoming a better woman, but she has a, a cloudy past? No, this don't have to be. If you ever thought about getting married, continue on with your marriage plans. It may not be this woman. It could be someone else. But don't think that this is taken from you all being kings, because I want you all to be kings and I want you uh, all to we recognize. Are, we're not king security. You absolutely boss. are. You, 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 you cannot tell me my husband is not a king. Oh, he's a king, but we, the average 30 years old, is we are just assholes looking for a family. It's just who we are. <laughs> well, hey, guess, hey, what, hey. guess what? By the time you find them and you become a husband and you have that family and you hmm. buy a home and you walk that out, you're going to feel like, you know what? I'm, I'm feeling a little bit growner. I've accomplished a little bit more. And you're going to start standing up a little more straight. And then you're going to hmm. do something different and you're going to accomplish something else. And guess what? By the time you make that third accomplishment, and your child runs in the door and be like, hey, daddy, guess what? You're going to feel like a king. Trust me. Thank you for having security, boss. And ladies, uh, practice uh, box discipline, please. <laughs> box discipline. Thank you, Fatty. You're Have welcome. Nice time. I know I convinced you, Fatty. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fatty. That was a good conversation. But anyway, y'all, uh, that was good, Fatty. Thank you. And you all, men, if y'all really feel like y'all are not kings right now, I understand. But when I say king, I know y'all don't have a kingdom per se, but when you own something and you have a wife and children that love and adore and appreciate you, you are the king of your household. So don't, don't again, don't get caught up in letting people tell you you're not because you are. You are. If not, you who? Who? You built it. You made a plan for it. It's yours. All we need to do is set it in motion. Remember, I believe in the nuclear family. So there you go. Does it anybody else that's in this comment section that want to come up or come up and talk to SB? If not, I'm going to still go with my women protecting y'all selves because this is, what's, this is what has to happen. Tapping, how are you? It's good to see you. What are you saying here? Yes, if you married, and I don't see it anymore. If you are married and you run your home, then you are a king. Tap and tell them. Tell them. We have so many people that speak negativity in these platforms, or in these comment sections. We got men now thinking they can't even be king over their own house. You, you can. They talk crazy. I see it all the time. But no, in my world, I have a king that lives here with me. Sherelle, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Blue universe. Ooh, look at the pretty hair. Oh, how you doing? I'm going to bring you up in just a second. Ooh, I like that. What you do? Hello. Did you roll your hair? Hi, can you hear me? I can, but wait a minute. Let me get my, let me put my earphones. Oh, no, you're fine. See, I'm watching you on two TVs and my phone right now. So that's why you was hearing that little feedback, but I got it. You got it. Turn it up just a little bit and we'll be good. Okay, hold on, wait. You got me. Just a you little. All right. There you go. I think you got me. Okay. Um, SB, I believe in a nuclear family. Thank you for my hair. Um, I feel like somebody was talking about me with my pipe cleaners in last week. I have three feet of hair, y'all. I have three what? feet of hair. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking about you. Why you say that? No, because you posted a short, and I looked at one of the comments in the short, and somebody said if she's looking for a husband, she should have came on here presentable. I was like, oh. Oh, I, I am so sorry about that. I didn't see that. Oh, don't you ain't got to be sorry. I said, oh, no, I don't. I don't hair. believe in negativity. I probably would have erased it. I'm oh, sorry. I, I didn't see that. It wasn't negative to me because I do believe that we need to be accountable to each other and as a community, first and foremost, I do. Um, and so I was happy that somebody said it, but I, I feel like people don't, people weren't trained to believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. I was trained like that. You, you understand? So everything I see on social media is entertainment. It's not real life to me. I come from a real home and real things. And my mama a hairdresser, so I'm used to seeing people in rollers and pin curls and all that <laughs> other stuff, because I know you got real hair. I not I know you're not from the, the nation of wigwam, I think, as they call it. Oh, Lord. I think that's what I think that's what they call it. So if I see you with some rollers or some pin curlers, I know you're going out into this world, and I know the curl's going to be tight. You know what I'm saying? I know it's going to look. Else, girl. <laughs> you, are, you are a real one. You are a real one. What you got to add to today, though? <laughs> <laughs> Real one. <laughs> I already you know I happen to know already. Wife Ed is gonna be so good. <laughs> we go enjoy ourselves. I just yep. know it. Eleven a.m. Eleven a.m. Um, 
what do I have to add? I really just want to say, because I feel like they don't really like solutions all the time in your chat for some reason. The solution to our problems, because I feel like for the past probably 30 years or so, we felt like the world was ending. And that's why people don't want to have responsibility for nothing no more, um, is get back to homeschooling and homesteading. You got to have a home. You have to raise your children. Too many people in this world are like, I can't wait for my kid to be of school age so I can get my life back. Your children are your life. You made them. <laughs> yeah, but, but not forever. I got grown kids. At least till at least till 16, SB. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You see I got what you. I mean? Okay, okay yeah. I and thought you meant like a lot of people, people are saying, I can't wait for my kid to be five so they can go to school so I can get my life back. Oh, wow. Five. You're going to oh, let me tell you, Blue Universe. Listen, guys, I want to tell y'all something. This, this is a little downer, but I'm telling you the way that we're going. We got to do better. I heard on the news, and I don't know exactly where it was, but you all might have heard it also. They had a story on there where a young six-year-old boy was being sexually assaulted on the school bus, in the back of the school bus by another kid. And the bus driver stopped the bus several times because they thought that they were fighting, but he was actually fighting the young man off. Six years old, y'all. Six years old. This is what we're this is what I'm talking about. I don't know the whole situation. I'm definitely gonna look into it and see what's going on. But this is a real thing. Six years old. You That's know, a real problem. This is you, you, you not only that, just a couple about a month ago now, a six-year-old, six again shot a teacher, shot his own teacher, had a gun and took this gun to school and shot. I remember that. Kid. It was in like Virginia or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so, people... so understand y'all, these numbers are going down and it's because we're losing it because we don't have our kings in our household because the men, other women are not showing up. We don't have that nuclear family right. because the child who's ever doing it, they're mocking somebody. Something has happened. This is just not an original thought of a six-year-old. Y'all understand this, don't you? A six-year-old just didn't originally think of this, especially not in, a, in a, an abusive sense. Right. So there's an issue. And if we don't put it back together, I mean, can you imagine dealing with those type of feelings as a six-year-old and having to grow up with them? You know, and then we have all this liberation. And, and y'all telling me that your mind is not chaotic when you're continuously giving yourself to somebody. Your brain is screwed up. Screwed Everything up. screwed up. It's a whole life of dysfunction. It's a whole life of dysfunction. People really don't understand. <laughs> no, they don't. And and you know what? That's wife Ed. So that um, is wife Ed, <laughs> and I look forward to wife this Ed. But Patreon I really stuff. You have to sign up to hear about what what how uh, sex spiritually gets in your head. You have to sign up for that. We can't just talk about that on on the on the live wire. <laughs> right. Um, I, did, for I did want to say before I go that I did get a call earlier from my uncle from church because I grew up in many different churches with many different people. Um, and I got a call from him telling me that his 35 year old son commits suicide. He has a wife and two children and he's 35 and he, he commits suicide. And in me talking to my my church uncle, like, I mean, like this man been my uncle since I was eight years old in a church. You know what I'm saying? I'm 26, so this man has known me my whole life. So in us having this conversation about the fact that his son that he brought into this world is no longer here, he's just pouring into me and so worried about me. And, oh, baby girl, you know, we got to sit down and talk and I want to help you start your bakery and da 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 And I had to stop him. I said, whoa, let's put the brakes on this real quick. You as a black man brought a black man into this world that is no longer here anymore. And you are worried about me. We, I'm <laughs> You see what I'm saying? We have to protect each other in such a way. And he said to me, when I said it to him, he said, well, you know, I believe that the daughters God gave me in church are my real daughters. Y'all my real nieces. Y'all were extra special. Wow. You know what I'm saying? The fathers that we have, we have to protect them. The brothers that we have, we have to protect them. The, the, the... People don't understand how strong black men are and how much it takes to be that strong. And how much we should value them. And how they much don't support know how much is necessary to be that strong. And and you know what, what else women don't know? It's us that needs to do this. You know, they got each other most of the time, but they need us to value them. And I know they're not perfect. And I know they do a lot of jacked up things, but the examples of leadership is what's lacking. We got to get all this stuff back in order and you got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm starting with the women because I'm a woman. 
that's best for me to do. This has to be somebody else that goes for the other side, but we're going to do it. But you blue universe. I got somebody else. He's, I think he's from Wig, Wiglom. I think he's from Wiglom actually. And I'm going to bring him up and uh, Wiglom, whatever he says. And we're going to talk Ooh. to him for a little bit, but listen, it's good to see you stay close by. I got some information coming and um, I'll talk to you soon. Wiglom. <laughs> oh, I got some super chats I need to read before we get done. BB, BBB, how you doing? SB, I'm happy you continue to have the conversation with uh, Fatty. Sure. Very wonderful exchange. Not all combos have to be agreeable. Agreeable, excuse me. <laughs> Y'all, I know I cannot see, uh, but you're cordial. Absolutely, I'm cordial. I like Fatty, you know, and I'm going to, he's going to see what I'm saying. We're going to stop with these talking points, y'all. These talking points and these stats. We're going to get the real life. We're talking about the neighbor. He's talking about his niece. <laughs> Fatty, you are so wrong for that. I was not talking about your niece, your niece. But anyway, thank you for that, Big Bear Bull. All right, scam. Scam. Guess what? Where you at? I don't see you. Uh, can, can you hear me? I can. Uh, listen, um, you used to hear Blue Universe up here talking about Wiglam, right? <laughs> yeah, Asalamu as Wiglam. Asalamu Wiglam. Yeah, she's talking about Wiglam Salam. I, you listen, was that you that made that comment? No, it wasn't because I didn't see you make any comment. Was that no, you? No, I was in the gym. No, I'm in the car. Mm -hmm. I was in the gym. I, 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 I hadn't been in the chat. All right. So, listen, um, what you got to add to this conversation, sir? Uh, no, I like the exchange between you and Fatty, that y'all actually had the conversation. There was no gender war base to fight a battle. You said what you said. He said what he said. That was cool. Right. Um, no, I want him to have that opportunity. I want everybody to have that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Um, something I know, and I'm not targeting, I'm not saying uh, targeting a, a specific person. I'm just talking about it. I'm talking in general. Mm -hmm. There's this fake existence in people's minds that there's a, that there's an auction when you go to try to pick a spouse. And you say, well, all right, I'm six foot two. I make thirteen point six dollars a week. Now I should get a woman with a body count of fourteen point three. Is that fair? That's somehow in people's mind. Like people are people. Um, and they always talk about in the man in the I guess the manosphere, which I don't agree with about eighty percent of anything they do. And a lot of them are running from me now because I'm coming and actually speaking stuff that they don't want to hear. Um. There's a lot of the, the biggest disorder is communication. Men talking to women, women talking to men, and they hate each other or starting to get to get to that. But they still keep talking about women and body count or men and their money and how much money and protect and provide and the same talking point versus finding somebody who's even want even likes you. Like if you if a woman is dealt with 58 different dudes and they tell you you got to be a high value man and make five hundred thousand dollars a year, she probably doesn't like you. That's why she told you that. She ain't interested. So she's trying to beat you into either you got to become something that you're not or like the last dude, but she, she don't want you. When women are interested, they don't say stuff like this. They don't ask about uh, body counts and all the statistical data. They don't do that. Usually when men want women, they don't ask, excuse me, how many men have you slept with in the 2000s? Uh, and they pull out some kind of barometer and start doing an inspection. You either want the woman or you don't. If you want her, go after her, see if you can work with her. If you don't, leave her alone. Uber her back to the street. Um, but I just wish that the spaces talked more about communication and connection and people being, becoming more appealing towards each other versus all the, the how much the man makes and all the other stuff. When that before even realizing that the people don't even like each other. There's a lot of men who hate women. There's men that can't stand, excuse me, women hate the men and the men hate the women. And you can't do anything like that. All I can do is troll and actually it's getting exhausting. Scam, I love your skits. Um, your trolling is sometimes a, a, a good relief, believe it or not. Um, well, what I'm you. trying to do is definitely add balance back to um, these platforms because I'm not I'm not lying to either one man or woman. Mm -hmm. the, I wasn't I, talking about you. Oh, I know. No, no, no. I don't. Oh, okay. You know what? What I'm saying is, I want to do what you're saying, though. You know, I want to add value to men and women so they can have more things to talk about. 
But for right now, our value has been locked up in our looks and in this bag. But I happen to know that your bag is not going to sustain you and your bag is just not a given. You know what I'm saying? Like um, I've said this before, money can come and go. And I'm saying this from an entrepreneur uh, state of mind. My husband and I, we, we create our own money, if y'all know what I mean by that. We don't show up at a job or an IT or anything like that and wait for some to actually someone to actually pay us. Um, we actually have to create on our own. We have businesses or have had businesses in the past that didn't do well or did well for a time, but didn't sustain. I've been selling real estate since, what, 2001. Y'all all know the real estate market crashed in 2008. We went from making hundred thousands of dollars years for years to absolutely twenty thousand dollars. So that's what I mean by money comes and goes, and we have to do better. I mean, you know, we have to figure out why we like someone outside of the money that they're making. I always say that women need from what from men. You know what I what I say is scam. Do you know the two things that they need from a man? What protection and provision? No, I say security and stability. Yeah. yeah, security and stability. A woman, you give a woman some security, meaning that um, some can tie that into money, but I see it more as she's you're going to be there. You're going to be there for her. She doesn't have to worry about you running out in the middle of the night and leaving her or what have you. You offer her security and stability. Stability is the, the fact that I got somewhere to live. I got somewhere to lay my head. I don't have to worry about the eviction notice on the door. You know, it ain't got to be a mansion for me. It doesn't have to be a mansion, but I need to know that this is ours and you're going to take care of it. Usually a woman, if she's off of that, she will go along with the plan. This is how it goes. And then you can build on the rest. But I do understand that today's modern woman are seeking and requiring more things. I would say to most men that these women don't want to be wives. Those are just not the qualities of a wife. You know, a yeah, wife... Okay. No, go ahead. I am say... um. I damn near got kicked off of two panels today because one of them, they saw me coming. One of them had their talk, YouTube talking points about the men. And the first thing I said was, let's be real. Modern women run 80% of this show because everything y'all keep talking about and everything is not going to be based on why it's going to be based on the very modern women that are unmarriable anyway. And every question was about modern women. Then I told, I let them know, we can put one modern woman up here and all the shift, all everybody has boxing gloves on waiting to attack the modern woman. Ten minutes later, a woman came up there and they went and attacked my attack, nine on one on the woman. And I'm eating popcorn. And I'm like, I got you. I told y'all. Then it just fumbled. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, here to go to problems right here. There, you, there you go. There go your not, problems. I'm not interested in that, though. You know, I, I, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, no, I know. I know what you're saying. And I'm, I'm talking with you. I'm not telling you to stop talking. I'm just saying to you okay. that my mission is going in a different direction because I understand that um, we have a group of people that just want to win. They really don't want to get out of this circular argument. They want to they want to win in that argument. They don't want to win with a solution. I'm more solution based and I feel like the uh -huh. nuclear family is the answer. They don't care about an answer. They want to stay in that circular conversation. I'm going to the next side. Excuse me. And only those people that want to be married are going to participate in SB Nation. There may be some coming over here to peep and see what I'm doing and see if it's gaining any you know, momentum or whatever. But that's what I'm doing. And I, I first want to work on the women, um, work on ourselves, you know, and then I want to definitely lead towards us being wives. So. That's the way it's going to go. And I hope that men that want the same thing can recognize, hey, 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 it's something different about this woman. She is a wife. I may need to spend some time with her. But understand, recognize and understand and respect the fact that I'm saying to you, I am preserving myself for my husband because I done messed up enough. I, I, I'm living in modern times and I thought that this was OK to do because everybody around me told me it was OK to do. I realize now that I've messed up. I'm trying to get my head straight. You know, are you down with that? Maybe we can have these conversations on how to get my head straight. You can work on yours whenever, but I need mine straight. I need to be able to make decisions as a woman, as a wife. And right now, I don't know where I'm going. I'm thinking, shoot, I'm thinking I can do what you do. Um, that's going to be a hard sell to say, hey, I ran out here in the streets. I did this here, that there, some of that there. And to convince a man, hey, um, I'm on the used rack, but I want you to pay the new price for it. 
that's going to be hard to sell. I won't get into the back to the, but I'm just saying, um, yeah, that's going to be a hard one to sell. It's not going to be me trying. A lot of trust has been broken between man and woman. But listen, all you can do, all you can do, scam, is walk it out. Y'all remember that song? Go walk it out. Oh, walk it out. That's all you can do. You have to walk. You have to watch me. You have to watch my mannerism because, uh, even though, again. I believe in redemption and I believe in grace. And if a woman wants to change it, she can definitely become a, a virtuous woman. But again, as men, y'all still have your preference. You could choose whatever uh-huh. you want. You could choose whatever you want. But if this woman is valuing herself, then let her value herself. You know, Miss Belinda, can you come up? Because I want to know who sounds stupid. <laughs> I really want to know. Bolo, how are you? I want to know who's sounding stupid, Miss Belinda. You can't be just over here just putting all anything in the comment section. You got to stand behind it. So, um, scam though, you're right. And listen, I appreciate you so much. I love your skits. You already know it. I left you a message today. Hopefully, you'll get it if you haven't already. Yeah, so. Okay. And um, I'm going to talk to you soon. But go ahead. If you had something else you want to add, please do. And I'm going to talk to Mel in just a moment. Yeah, I'll just give it quick. No, I just. Um... It's just getting, there's too much of, if the conversation is based on modern women, then there shouldn't, there can't be a conversation on actual putting anything together because those women are not for marriage. Just like the modern men or the men who want to do whatever they want. It can't be a, we're going to put it together, but then we want to act like we're out of control. They just don't mix. And I don't understand why so many conversations are based on the modern woman and then asking for a solution. Right. I can agree with you with that. And I don't, um, you know, I guess the term modern woman, you know, is a very general term. You know, I guess we should find something else to call the ladies that I'm speaking of or find. You know what? I like the fact of those women you're talking about. We should call those city girls because we're in a modern time and a woman now is just a modern woman. I don't know if that's because we're generalizing when we say that. But those are not the women I'm speaking to. They know what they want and they know what they're doing. And life is going to grow them up and give them exactly what they want. I'm talking about a woman, a different type of woman, a woman that wants to be a wife. So um, again, though, we're not trying to take anybody's preferences away. We're not trying to manipulate anyone into doing anything. They do not have to talk to these ladies that I'm speaking about ever. You can definitely keep it moving and go on with the next city girl. It's quite all right. So thank you, Scam. I'm a big deal. All right. Asalaamu (laughs) Alaikum. Whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Sherelle, they think all women are the same, basically. It sounds like it. We're really generalizing, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna let that happen, Sherelle. I got you. We're not gonna let it happen. We're talking about a particular type of woman that want what we're talking about. And it, it's not gonna be all of them. And it's not gonna be easy because we already know the feminist movement and this sexual liberation and, and just the just the influence of social media is what we listen to often as women. We got to deprogram ourselves and get on a whole new vibration and just figure this thing out, you know. And hopefully our desires to be wives is overcomes the desire to be out here in this world uncovered, hopefully. Mel, how you doing? How you doing, SP? How's it going? How's it going? It's going very well, sir. What you got yeah. to add to tonight's conversation? Oh, you and I started this out weeks ago, didn't we? Hmm. Remember, oh yeah, the body count, oh, man, the leverage and all. <laughs> well, you know, that? <laughs> not really, but you know what I'm saying. We kind of, you and I kind of touched on it a little bit. We didn't talk too much yeah. about the the leverage word, but I talked to you about preserving your body. But yeah, what you got to yeah, add? I mean, it's this thing when I know you said you know we try to find solutions or stuff like that. I think you were saying that earlier when you were speaking of fatty something like that. I know you do provide solutions. We. Did you, and in that age, there's so many solutions out there that fits people with specific needs and lifestyle. The problem is people choose not to apply it. So it's easy to just go online and complain and fight those who actually are living it, show it, show the work, and show that they succeeded in it. But you got people that just don't, they choose not to want to do the work and everything. There's despite, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see I see this among certain dating coaches among the time with some dudes. And like some dudes need some tune up in their dating life and stuff like that. Yet they go online, fight the majority of these guys. I, I wonder um about their own they they dating dating lifestyle, how they you know was able to be successful in the dating game. And it's like these same dudes are probably like 
you know what? They ain't going to even do the work. You just want to go online and complain so much. I don't even say some of these dang coaches will actually agree with you right now when it comes to, especially with this body count subject, because this is the reality. Like, you know, it's, I, I'm glad Scam, like, you touched on this. Like, in real life, no, I, I, how am I here to do talk about a woman's body count like that in real life? Bring up that question. Like I said, I don't ask a woman's body count. I'm focused on she treating me at the time, man. For real, that's it. If it's how I like it, and then you know what? We, we rocking and stuff. So it's like, yo, it's like, I know some dudes really focus on that body count so much. Most of the dudes I ain't even got a dating life at all, period, and stuff. So it's like, yo, like, why you so much focus on that so much? I don't have to focus on how she treats you and everything. Because you'd be surprised and everything, for real. Like, just like you said, there's some females that might have a particular lifestyle. They be formed, and it worked. Some of them are married. Or some of them, you know what? They have uh, in particular lifestyles that you might not agree with, but they are married also, too. There's so many multiple marriages and relationships out there that people are in. And it's like, okay, if you're not part of that lifestyle, that's that's cool. Find one that works for you. But you sitting back complaining so much, nitpicking. It's like, yo, life is going to move on. Period. Life is going to move on. What are you going to do? You're going to go online and YouTube sometimes, complain more and fight those that got the experience and expertise and providing the information. Are you going to apply it? Because here's the thing. People, there's such thing as sucking up so much red pill. And I, I, I will even say this. The red pill definition, I've been so diluted with so many different definitions of it. It started to lose the original definition of what it is. Reality. Hold on for a minute. Um, Mel, I need your help. Can yeah. you define red pill in its original form for me right now? Except, as, well, we want to use the relationship aspect. They can use that metaphor for the matrix. Accepting a woman's nature, and that can apply for men also too. Accepting a person's nature in life period instead of what you was taught as as a child. But mostly for the men, we accept the woman's nature for what she really is instead of accepting what we was taught as a child about women and stuff. That some t sometimes a woman going to react based on her feelings. So she could be with a man for like three years. He proposed her and she decided not to marry him and break up. Now, everybody fighting the woman and everything. I think I saw a video on your Q season about that. Here's the thing. She's racking on the feeling. That's how women are. Got to set it what it is, what it is. Okay, so let me let me, let me me apply that. So you saying a red pill is in the movie, like in the movie, when we took the red pill, it opened our eyes and it let us see things for what they really were, right? Yeah. And it's just, it's just life, period. It's not necessarily a woman. It could be a woman and a man. Am I right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's fair for me to say that I should be seeing men, all of them, as leaders and kings. Mm -hmm. And have been given the authority as God gave them in the original, you know, uh, in original uh, forming of earth, like Adam, right? Exactly. Okay. So with that being I, said, well, go ahead. What are you going to say? No, they are nature as human beings in general. We want to go religion, as we're spiritual, whatever it is. Yeah, like men are, men are naturally in a natural state. We act more dominant. We act more savage towards each other. How can we troll men that way? By other other men. We control each other. You know what I'm saying? Our savage name. Women are more nurturers and stuff like that. That is what it is. But why do y'all call? Why do y'all call? So what makes you so red peel? I mean, if that's just reality, if I'm saying that correctly, get catch me when I'm off. If it's well, just reality to to recognize what it is, what is what it is then why is that so red pill? And is that being negative? Well, because like I said, people have been taking so much, adding to all different nuances to it. And if you, okay. I would say with a stream mindset also too, sometimes also too, like it got, got so diluted from its original state. Like I said, I've been listening to this space before the pandemic, when I go on panels for many years ago, when I, like I had like 10 years ago, I, my, I really was following them. Um, Dating coaches, you know, the only two I gravitate to was um Alan Roger Curry and stuff and Corey Wayne. And that's what helped listen, me with my daily um, life. I listened to them, got their books, applied it to myself because the main thing I had to help myself first, also too, and set women for what their nature is. But I didn't I didn't fill up and I had I, I could tell you about my you past all the stories, like I should be in red pill rage or black pill, well because I should be having hatred toward women, all the stuff I you know what I'm saying? I've been through with females, but I didn't carry that. But, what, carry but why it. is red pill only applying? So let me ask another question. You're saying the red pill within the manosphere only applies to women. Is that what I'm hearing? 
Yeah, that's what it originally was. And then oh, they okay. added other nuances to it also, too, behind that. But then it came so diluted with other new... I think I, I would say other new guys that came in it with a stream hatred mindset behind it so much. Okay. Because the reality is they're not going to apply it. They just want to get online, create online pair bonding groups to fight each other's different philosophy, but most of these dudes not even living it. It's like they don't want to... You know what? There's a difference between sucking so much internet stuff it's like you making yourself stuck online so much. Why don't you go out in the real world and apply it? Look at what you did in your past and see what's not working. Try something new. That's my hope. That I think you mentioned about with the stats. I feel the same way. We look at these stats so much. Yeah. You pay focus on the large stats that don't work. Why don't you focus on the small stats that actually did work? Do something well, opposite. Like you just check your own self. Get with your own family. The things that you can change. You know, exactly. we can change everything. You just want to, you know. Deal with what you got within your, your reach. But listen, the reason why I'm asking these questions about the red pill, because you already know I done been told you are manosphere and, and your red pill and all of that. And I'm trying to figure out what in the world was red pill, because I recall the movie. It just means you're woke and you see things for what they are. And I try to be a realist. Um, and I know oftentimes people want me just to go along with it, but I'm not the go along, get along type person. I think we should create our reality. And I think that's how it's done. Not all we shouldn't allow people just to influence us to do it. What's being done, you know, cause if we did that, then, you know, I might be identifying with us as a monkey in a couple of days and, you know, have y'all calling me monkey or whatever, but, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do what the world is doing. I'm not trying to have the world dictate my life. I'm trying to create my own. And I'm just telling women, um, and you know, men too, y'all should know this, that you all are King. You were built to be an authority um, that was God given from the beginning. And ladies, we do have value because I do hear in this space that sometimes we're not valuable and I want women to know that we are. So I'm just trying to get some clarity because I don't want to be lumped in with a group of people, first of all, that I know nothing about. And second of all, that have a message that doesn't apply to what I'm doing. I, I am an individual at this point. Um, I don't have or run a network of any kind. Um, but you know what? I'm, you know what my life and foundation is built on. It's godly principles. So if red pill and manuscript doesn't include that, then I definitely wouldn't be a part of it. And um, I think that's just what I want to say. You no, you, you, actually, you know what? You just answered your own question right there because that's the next step of the red pill. You finally set the things for what they are, and then you try, try to create different outcomes. Right. And that's what you just said. Yeah, you're in charge of your out outcomes. So I set the reality what it is, move accordingly. Well, now it's time for me to create new outcomes, new successes, look back on my life and reevaluate. And so I can create better outcomes. So I, that's like you said, create your own reality and stuff. Okay. You just, you just said it right there. <laughs> See, I, All right. All right, <laughs> you're man. the answer right there. <laughs> well, man, you know, as always, you are welcome and you've been very helpful, as always. And stay, um, stay your individual self, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't ever lose yourself no matter what. You ain't, yo, never try to be part of a crowd. No, 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 no. I can't do that because I, I asked too many damn questions. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, uh, Mel. Thank you God so bless much. bless you and Mr. Balls. Definitely. Thank Have you. Good night, everyone. Uh, listen, Sherelle, we're going to drop the link. Um, one more time. And then it's been about, we are going on two hours, but you know, I give y'all two hours. I'm special on Friday. It's good Friday, but I have, uh, Oh, I thought I had Dr. Steele ready to come in, but I know he has to trick us a little bit before he comes up, but Sherelle, there's the link. So hopefully if you all want to, um, speak to me today, I have something you want to say. Um, uh, Ms. Thompson, I would love for you to, uh, come up. I want to hear what you have to say. I definitely do. I want to hear your opinion about what you're speaking on because I'm always here to uh, obtain knowledge. Y'all know that. It's not about, um, I don't believe in insults and things of that nature. We're just trying to grow and to be the best versions of ourselves. But we get so many different information from his place and that place. Bolo, how you doing? Um, but, you know, I just wanted to share that with y'all. But Dr. Steele, come on up. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. Listen, before you get started, I want to answer a question for you because I, you ain't going to believe this. I went back. And you know I don't be reading the comments, but I went back and I saw in some live I did that you asked a question, and I think it was you, about my wedding. Did you ask that question? About your wedding? Yeah. Did you ask about, uh, may I ask, how much was your wedding? Uh, I think I might have uh, asked that question. Okay. I got married um, downtown at five, between five and six o'clock on a Wednesday evening. 
So my wedding was fifty dollars. Me and Mr. Boss decided wow. to buy a house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the reason why I asked that question because, you know, I remember watching that one video about uh, this one late, this one woman, you know, demanding that her wedding. What is it? 200,000, uh, 250,000 or something like that. Wasn't that what it was? 250,000. I mean, that's ridiculous. I, 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 I was wondering if um, Harry Megan's wedding, wedding was that much. <laughs> I don't know. And then the guy told her, is you crazy? And she was like, I ain't no blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I know what you're talking I, I, I did not see your comment because, you know, I don't, I'm not good with these comments <laughs> while, while I'm actually speaking. So I went back and I saw it. I was like, dang, I didn't even answer his question. I didn't even see this. So I said, the next time I see him, I'll make sure I answer that question. But um, we did not put out any money for a wedding. We said we got married and we said we was going to do um, a wedding a year from that time. And um, it just didn't happen. We end up, like I said, buying a house and and moving forward. And that was, you know, again, twenty seven years ago. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, if if a woman asks a man you know, a man to have a big enough wedding, I think this is one of those women where, you know, she wanted that fairy tale wedding, and and it makes me wonder, you know. Is she serious about marriage more than she is about the wedding? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look at this comment right here. Blue Universe says, my parents still paying off their wedding. and they've been separated for 10 years. <laughs> Take me to the courthouse. <laughs> you, I know you kid, because you just got that type of person down there. I know you joking right now. Listen to that. Been separated 10 years and they still mm. paying off the wedding. See the, No. This is this is ridiculous. But anyway, I know I threw you off with that. What did you want to add to tonight's conversation? <laughs> you know, you know something. I've always been you know, wondering about what the black marriage bill actually was. And at first when I first looked at it, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, it's a space where you know men can, you know, you know, talk about their problems, you know you know, giving out solutions to each other. But now it's like every now and then I hear some crazy stuff. The other day, Dennis Sperling, one of, one of the Black Man of Spear pro prominent members, he announced that he's out of the Black Man of Spear. Wow. And I'm like, what? So now, now, I mean, now I'm even more confused about what the Black Man of Spear actually is. Uh, and I know Lee came by this channel and sort of described it a little bit. Lee from Sage Talk. Yeah, well, I was on his channel, right? Yeah, I, I asked no, him. No, 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 he visited yours. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he visited yours. Okay. And so now, from what he talked about and what I've been hearing, what do you think, what is your take on the Black Man Spear? Well, you know what, um, Dr. Steele, I thought it was just simply um, taking care of men, honestly. And I, I say this all the time. I thought it was a place where men could go to grow and to be um, enlightened, to be better men, you know, to talk about the things that nobody's listening to, you know, to if they wanted to say something about a woman or if they were married and they were having issues or whatever the situation was, but just to make sure that men, that they're being the men that they should be, that they should be the leaders that they should be the kings and they should be operating and moving in a certain way. I thought basically it was to be just better men, you know, and it's a, it's a place for them to do so without uh, the women coming in and invading their space and, you know, but it seems like women have always been there, but it's always seemed like they didn't really want the women there. So there was always this pull. And, and I was, you know, that's how, that's how I got in there in the beginning. It was like, Hey, 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 I don't want to be a part of anything. Why are you including me? It's because I advocate for men, I advocate for men because I know I have a good one. Excuse me. And I know they didn't break the mold when they made them. I got some good ones that are friends too, you know? So I just know that there's good men out here. So when I hear all the negativity about men, I know it ain't true. And I know with the negativity, we just, cutting down what, you know, is, is a good thing. We just, you know, it's cutting the men's head off and it shouldn't happen like that. So I'm an advocate of that. But since then I've seen other parts of it where 
I can't even have a conversation with a man without him being disrespectful. Or when you're trying to talk to me and they say stuff like, you know, basically shut the hell up, um, you know, uh, you know, sit down and, you know, definitely treating us women as though we're not very valuable and that we're children. And I know that's not a, a space either. You know, mm-hmm. that's not that's not how it go. You don't th- that person's going to get you. That person's not going to be an asset to you, you know. And so I'm thinking, no, nah, that, that just can't be it either. But then I'm hearing at that point where now we got this red pill rage. And so now this we had Manosphere, which was fine. But then it broke off and now there's a red pill and then now there's a red pill rage. And I'm thinking, OK, this is getting very hard to follow. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I don't really know what I think about it now, but I do think that uh, there is some rage going on where it's coming from or who's supposed to put a handle handle on it. I don't know, but it's definitely getting off. So, you know, I, maybe I'll find somebody. I don't I don't know who the members are. But I definitely have heard that they've having their conclave in September down there in Atlanta. So there must be enough people to continue on with the manosphere that it'd be OK. But again, I really don't know what to think. I, I would think that I could come to a person like you, not saying that you are part of it, of but you, you listen so well. And, and you're in these different spaces where you might could get more knowledge than me. I don't do a lot of social media and I don't you know, I don't follow a lot of people. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But, you know, as far as its validity right now, it's still very um, valuable to some. But when you start breaking off with these, I've heard red pills, I heard blue pills, and I've heard purple pill. And you know, it's something, I don't even know where all these pills are anyway. Neither. So, <laughs> you know, and then uh, Sherelle's here, she says, Pas- is Passport Bros a part of the manosphere? See, you, I don't know. You know, I've talked to Passport Bros and gotten along very well with them. They seem to be a a totally different type of man. I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to, you know, so I just kind of accept it as it comes. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I do. And and one thing I want to say about the Passport Bros, at least they are clear about who they are. Yo, the word passport, meaning they get their passport, get out of the country and and, and look for a lady there. I mean, it's very clear. Very clear. Like I said, all these other spaces I'm not so clear about. <laughs> You're right. Listen, Lost in Translation says, uh, I'm a part of the, uh, pa- the Pastor Bros. <laughs> I like that group. <laughs> You're very clear on who you are. <laughs> I, you know, no, listen, no getting him right. mixed up with anybody. I understand that, definitely. But, yeah. um, you know, that's why I was asking Mel a moment ago, because when you say red peel, and I know what that means. It's just you take the red pill, you're now your mm-hmm. eyes are open to the reality of who people are or what things are. And you just accept it. You know, this is not a perfect person. This person did this. You know, all these years they might have told you that this is this and this is that. Now you got to accept it. Grow up, be an adult and accept what's really going on. Right. Mm-hmm. So I get that. But I, what I don't get is that why did it only apply to women? <laughs> How mm. did that work? <laughs> Well, you know, are you telling me right, right now, Mel? Because it should apply to life, not just women. Right. So, you know, we, we, we're a little still, we, we're still broken a bit. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you for having me. And always. always. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Uh huh. Miss Sherelle. Sherelle, how you doing today? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We're on stream yard now. Hey, security boss. Yeah, you know my, you know my, um, my Melly kept falling apart on me. You remember, you was there. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I clicked the link. I'm like, okay, we're on stream yard today. Yeah, this is pretty easy, right? But um, yeah. I like milling better, but it went out a few times. And for no reason, I was like, okay, we're going to have to do something different. So Mr. Boss decided to go back to StreamYard. I think we lose a little of the functions, but hey, as long as I'm not cutting out in the middle of everything, it's okay. Yeah. You know, I think um, this virgin thing should only be talked to virgins about right so if a woman is a virgin like that's your nieces your little cousins like you tell them you know because we all made the mistake already so we live in this world of mistakes and it's like 
men act like they're not supposed to be virgins before they get married. The only time that you're not supposed to be a virgin is if you get a second or third wife. We live in America. That's a crime. So it's like, if you've been out there and you've had sex with women and you made mistakes and she's had sex and she's made mistakes with men, if y'all are grown and y'all learn from y'all mistakes and y'all are trying to be better, why, why should women feel like, okay, well, I've had sex once. Now I'm just damaged. And since I'm damaged because I chose to, and women don't just break their virgin with anybody. They fall in love with some boy who's telling them that, you know, we're going to get married and have kids and they all fall for it. They lose their virginity. And then now society is telling you you're broken. So you should just give yourself away because all of your value is gone with the first man that you trusted or you believed in. And it's like, that produces what? Like my friend, I have a friend who's a uh, celibate now and we were talking about it or whatever because I'd be coaching her through it because I've been celibate longer. I mean, she's, she's like telling me, she's like, I'm not waiting until marriage because life is too short. And she just, she feels like it's, in today's society, it's unrealistic for her to hold herself into marriage. And I and I definitely see why she feels that way or why she understands it to be that way. But I mean, if, if we supposed to be getting better, then why are we holding people's past against them? Well, see, listen, thank you for that comment. But the reality of it is um, we definitely do want to teach are big examples for younger girls to let them know that they should remain virgins. But the part that I think you're missing is you all are growing up in a time where there is sexual liberation all around you. You turn on the TV, they're talking about WAP. You turn on the TV, you see a boob. Everything is sexual. You can't even, gosh, you can't even have some orange juice. An orange juice commercial is wrapped in sex. So everything is awakening that spirit within you. Everything. Right. So for us to expect, I want it. I want it. I pray for it that women remain virgins. But the expect the expectation is way too high. But even if they do have sex, we're not going to throw them away. I definitely think that we should grace everybody and people can definitely be redeemed. But as far as you, I'm going to go with your girlfriend first, she says life is too short. The reason why she's saying that is because her focus is in the wrong place. God has given us a big old brain. And a whole big old world out there for us to explore more than sex. You see, the world is telling her sex is where it is. And this is what she needs to do because she's been exposed to it. I'm saying to you, tell her there's some books to read. There's an exercise program she can do. There's some life somewhere that she can, someone somewhere that she can feed into. It ain't got to be having sex with, another, with a man. But guess what else? She can be preserving herself to be a wife if that's what she wants to be because all that requires work. It requires a mindset shift. Just because you're not having sex don't mean you're ready. You still have to line up with what that looks like to be a wife. You know, am I am I wearing the appropriate clothing? Am I speaking the appropriate language? It's not, it's more than just not having sex. Not having sex clears your mind. But do I want to be a virtuous woman? Because if you don't want to be, go ahead and have sex. Go ahead and have sex and try to protect yourself the best way you can. But then don't get reckless in the meantime. Then come up with an STI, a baby, some dude that has nothing to offer you. You was just hot one night and all of that. Because don't get caught up in the fact that you're not giving off the sex. You're not giving away the sex because you want to be able to think. You need a clear mind. And when you are sexually active with a man and he is ejaculating in you, that's an emotional thing. You're receiving everything and all things that he has been through. Now, I know people don't know about this, and this may not be the place to talk about it right here live because wife Ed is coming, but it is a real thing. And when you get to acting out and you don't know why you're acting out, most of the time it's because of this. You know, it's because of the things that you have taken on as a single woman that decide to entertain men that were not covering you or that have not made those vows to you. Most of the time, that's what it is. So I would say, and you don't have to, of course, but this could, this be, could be for anybody in the um, comment section or in this live. When I say you're not giving sex away, it's not about the sex. That's about a clear mind. There are other things that you can be do can do to become a virtuous woman, to, to preserve your virtue. Your virtue. Now, we, we struggle with being feminine, feminine as Black women. We struggle with it. 
because we want to fight because all the junk that we've influences us, all the junk that influences us. So we want to fight. We want to get rid of that. We want to get rid of the fact that we come here naturally with a bad attitude, seems like, because of what we grew up in. You want to be able to change your mind. And the only way you can do that is to clear it. So I hope I answered that question, um, Sherelle. Um, but if the young lady is doing that and she says, you know, that's all I'm saying. There's more to it than not having sex. The sex just clears the mind. And I think I've said that three times. So hopefully somewhere, somebody somewhere will believe me. They say you say things three times, people believe you. you know? <laughs> no, I definitely understand that. <laughs> right. So it's, it's more to it than that. Don't, we don't need to get up. It's, we ain't figured out yet. Everybody knows how to have sex. You can take a person with that is, uh, what do you call it? We used to call them, I can't say that. I don't want to say the word, wrong word now, but it's called, um, I'm not going to say it, but you don't have to have uh, all the knowledge in the world to know how to have sex. You know, you don't, you don't. So it just innately in us to have sex. You don't, I'm not talking about good sex. I'm just talking about for a young boy and a young woman know what to do with it. it it's real easy. So that's an easy part, but we don't, we're not willing to accept all the things that come with it because we don't know about it. So I would just say, slow down, take your time and figure it out. But you need a clear mind to do it. Yeah. Was there anything else, Miss Sherelle? That you um, no, I think that was just it. Because I, I just I do truly believe that. Uh and my best friend used to say this all the time. He she just recently got married. Um he's like, if a woman a woman either has zero bodies or she has a million. And he's like, I'ma fall somewhere in between there. But I can't focus on that because I'll never know or whatever. And I think so many people feel like either a woman is a virgin or she's a three or four and there's no in between. And I just think that's a bad way to look at it because I think I know that men deal with three or fours a lot or they've been scarred and they kind of look at all women the same. But that just gives women who want to be married, that just gives them a bad rep because if a woman is a virtuous woman and she's holding herself and a man meets her, you know, and she's not willing to put out by the third date, because I guess that's the rule, right? Like, if a woman doesn't have sex with you on the third date, then you double or whatever. But it's like, now there's, there, they don't want to compete with that. Because it's like, if I got to compete with a girl that's going to have sex with you on the first night that she meets you, I, I already lost. I don't even want to sign up for the game. So it's like. I agree. But don't you agree with that? I don't want the game either. I want the man that's sincere about being a husband. Right. So it's like they don't even realize that if that's the type, if you want the woman that's going to sleep with you on the first night, then you're not even in this. You're not even nowhere close to the women who's not going to give you a reason to complain. Like you're not nowhere near the virtuous women because you're in the pool of I better get this before the third date. And then you're trying to find a wife in that pool. And it's like because you sat in that pool and swim in that pool so long. Now you're trying to say that all women on the planet are just like the women in the pool that you're swimming in. It's kind of like the same thing with women do, right? Women have picked the bad boy, the rapper, the thug, and then they, they've been swimming in that pool so long that they will act like a good man doesn't exist nowhere on the planet because they've been swimming in this pool. They kind of just, I don't know, like men, modern men are modern women. It's like one and the same. But guess what this is doing, Sherelle? And then I'm going to let you go. I need to say this. Um, the fact that women are having random sex, random reckless sex with men, it is making them feel as though the men are no good. It's it's the men. It's just like you said, the rappers. Because the um, the expectation or what they're receiving from them is nothing. So now they're painting a picture that all men are like this. All men are no good. And so if all you're getting from a man is a bust down and then he leaves, like you said, you have a whole group of women. You mentioned this to me, Sherelle. You opened my eyes with this. You have a whole group of women that feel like men, they leave. Isn't that what they do? Because that's all they've seen. Now, see, I didn't think that way. I don't think that way because that's not what my life is about, right? My, I have a dad that's been there forever. You know, he's not a perfect man. I have a husband who's been with me over 27 years. He's not a perfect man. But we don't come from a place where men just leave. I don't come from a place where men just leave. So for a woman to have that for a group of women or a society of women to think that it's like, okay, what did we miss? And where are these people at? 
you know, hey, listen, that's not how it works. Don't think that. That's not correct. Even if you've seen that, that's not how it's supposed to be. Don't operate like that. Do something different. Do something different. Hold yourself. You know, if you want this man to stay, try to be a wife to this man. Maybe he can see you as a husband. Maybe he can see you as a wife. and He could be your husband and he won't just leave because that's not what they do. You know, instead of just accepting him, oh, men ain't, you know, he gonna leave, shoot, let him go ahead and go. I'll just go down here and get me a check. Come on. See, see, that has no value in it. That has, I feel sick saying it. It has no, how can I raise a productive child, especially a son, knowing that this Negro, when he get her age, he gonna leave a woman too. What? What? But that's right. But like, that's the whole concept of you ain't nothing. You your daddy wasn't nothing. Your grandpa wasn't nothing. You ain't gonna never be nothing. That's what women tell their sons. I know. You know. And the thing about it is, it's just like you know the whole saying of a man ain't supposed to be kept. Or uh, like, it's basically like the only thing that keeps a man is a man that want to be kept. And that's what people put out there. Like, right? You can be the perfect wife. You can be loyal. You can be faithful. You can cook. You can clean. You can be a freak. You can have his kids. You can do whatever. If that man doesn't want to be in a marriage or committed relationship, the moment that he feels like he's ready to check out, he's going to leave. It's nothing that's going to keep him or make him stay except his own self telling himself, like, I stay. This is my, I have a duty to my family. I have a duty to my wife and I'm going to do this. And... But see, Sharia, the part that we are missing is I, I always follow or I want men to be you want a man that's a God fearing man. It's got to be something that he believes in that's bigger than him. Um, and I don't believe I think a man will be with a woman who he wants to be with. I'm not saying he's going to be a perfect man. I'm not going to say he's not going to stray. And then the woman has to make a decision on what she wants to do. I'm not talking about perfection. Um, and if that's, that's what women are looking for, it's not going to happen. And I don't think a man builds with a woman just to walk out. I don't believe that. But I think a lot of times women do things backwards. We um, get pregnant with the anticipation that he's going to be there. And then we try to be that wife and, and all of that. And he never asked you to marry him. The fact of the matter is, it wasn't you. You were not that one. You wanted to be that one and you did all the exteriors. But mentally, you all never had that connection. And a man will sleep with you. He will, you know, um, until he gets to a point where he realizes that there's more to life than that also. He'll sleep with you. So we still have to, I'm still going back to the woman pr protecting herself from being, tr from having trauma or being involved with a man that doesn't want the same thing that she wants. But again, Sherelle, you already know, we got a million city girls out there that all they want to do is have sex nowadays. They're not interested in what we're talking about. So there may and be- you know what? I, because I'm me and I guess it's because I'm me. Like I just- as a little girl, I don't look at my nieces. I don't look at my little cousins. I don't look at a 10-year-old girl. And I don't feel like in her heart she thinks of, I'm going to grow up and be a 304. Oh, I just absolutely. feel like there's something really broken inside of a woman. Because I just don't feel like when I see women who are promiscuous, who, who do do this, like I feel like something is mentally wrong with them and I try to be more understanding because you know I could be different they could be they could be totally doing this on their own accord but just as a little girl understanding what sex is understanding how like it's it's really like a very intimate thing why do you want that many people in your personal space why do you want to be intimate with so many different people who don't care about you I just feel like it's it has to be some type of brokenness for you to feel like it's okay for you to be with this man and 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 they all leave they don't care about you and somehow being by yourself is worse than being with 10 men a year or 20 men a year or whatever you doing this man and that man and that man like are you that afraid to be alone that you need somebody in your bed even though they're not giving you nothing but what they're giving you i i just I don't see like the innocent little girls growing up to be what women are today. What happened? Like that's not okay. normal. So, let me to say me, this to it's you. It's not normal. No, it's not normal. And that's what I was trying to say to you that day. But this is what's happening. 
you got a whole song out there talking about a WAP, right? And then you got a whole movement of influence out there that's twerking everywhere. And all you see on social media are young girls twerking, 10-year-olds, 6-year-olds, and maybe even younger. They're moving their bodies in a way. They're moving. So this is, it's just, it's a spiritual thing. So it's opening up that, that eye gate and it's opened up that spirit to certain things. They don't even know it. But then when they get to a certain age and they're ready to entertain a young man, say dad is not in the house. If dad is not in the house, they are broken and they are looking for something. And that first young man that says he's there to fill that gap, he's getting in there. And then he will leave because he didn't know he was supposed to be there or to stay. And then she is broken and she's going to feel that trauma. Every time she finds another one, she's going to have sex with him, trying to fill that void of brokenness that she never got initially. And no one is around her telling her, hey, this is not how it's supposed to be done. You need to go to counseling or what have you. Everyone around her is doing the same thing. And she may do this to, to the age of 20 before she realizes, dag, what have I done? You know? Because she was operating with a child's mind and she was trying to feel, she just wanted to be loved, if I can say that. I know that's corny. I know men don't even really understand that women love them like that, especially at that young age. It's just like what you said initially. Women, a, a man has come in and told a woman he loves her and she believes him because guess what? That was a man that is operating in his gift, right? He has the ability as a leader as an authority. And I know y'all think I'm crazy, but even as a young man, y'all still are men and we're still designed the way we're designed. And we still interact the way that we interact, unless we have fallen for all this crazy influence from feminist movement or from social media. We said this is a young girl, a young person, not 10 years old anymore, but she's growing up. So the influence that a man could have on you is still there. It's still operating. A woman is still giving to a man at 16, at 17. At 18, she's still giving to him because that is the way we were designed to do. That's what we were supposed to do. But she did it. He didn't know what kind of authority he had over her. He was really just wanting to have a release. And he did it. Then he left. She's broke. That might be the first broken heart she's had ever in her life. And guess what? A broken heart that like I'm talking about, it really hurts. It's not just, oh, a broken heart. I mean, it's pain that came with it. And then that girl was trying from that point on to fix that. That's why she went with the next one or the next one. And she's not going to be able to fix it. She's going to have to be able to, she's going to have to fix her own mind. And she's going to have to get her own body in check with what her creator has said she needs to be. But see, I'm, I'm willing to give women grace and, and show them something and let them know you still have value, even though you messed up three times, four times, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not saying that she's now a 304. I'm just saying she's off. Like you said, it's broken. We just got to give people space to do so. But again, there are people who love that life and that's how they want to be. Let them be. Let them be, Sherelle. Sherelle, you, you, you know, you are amazing. You are amazing. You were able to see what was going on and not take part in it. But you're the woman I'm talking to. I don't know how many of the, you are they are there, you know? But anyway, Sherelle, I got somebody else in the back that I need to talk to. You okay. know, and I can talk to you any time. <laughs> right. So definitely tune in with me. You know, um, Wife Ed is coming. I would love for you to be a part of it if you can. But um, I thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. So, um, Mr. Blackwell, thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. Many men, many men don't like the bull nose rings. Hmm. But all she needs is one, I guess. Huh. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mr. Blackwell. Um, I'm going to catch up and figure that out real soon. <laughs> oh, she had. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, obstacles. What is this last part of your name here? It looks like ops, but what is it? Ops. <laughs> that would be funny. No, it's a opportunity. Uh, opp opportunities. So oh, obstacles, the opportunity. opportunity. Thank you yeah. so much for that. I was looking the other day. I said I'm not gonna call him the ops, but it was that's what it looks like for my side. <laughs> but how are you doing? It's so good to hear from you and to talk to you again. It was a pleasure the other day meeting you, and again, thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. It was the same for me on my side. <laughs> Uh, so I did hear you guys talking about a little bit of um, trying to understand the RP space. That's what they call it, you know, for short. Um, 
I definitely would say that there's a bunch of things that the RP space talks about, but most people gravitate towards dating and relationships. Have you seen some podcasts that used to talk about finance or they used to talk about just something differently, but now they're starting to have like dating shows and they're talking about relationships. It's just because a lot of people are signing on and are interested in this. Right. Okay. Um, but the RP space talks about a lot of things. It's like the matrix. It's kind of like an analogy and a play on the movie matrix. Right. Right. Um, and dating and gender relationships. That's a small aspect to it. But it also talks about men, of course, getting their money up. Right. Uh, men, how they control their emotions, their emotional intelligence, how they uh, should go about increasing their social awareness, uh, become good social communicators. So they have many uh, different things in the RP space that talk about other things. But sometimes people tune into the thing that most people are watching, which is relationships, human relationships and dating. So that's the thing that gets the most watches and views and more people are aware about. OK, so would you say I was red pill? <sighs> I, I, I would say that you could be a part of the space by talking about things that especially most people don't talk about in the general society. Right. So if we went to just like the mainstream and would say what you're talking about, is it on Steve Harvey? And it's not quite right. But. Uh, you are having a conversation that kind of goes against the norm. So kind of bring it back to the movie, right? The okay. red pill It's out of the main program where people are just like going by the narrative, whatever it may be, and just thinking that's the world and that's the way things go. Even just now when you had that conversation, it was some key word accountability. You said, hey, but what about us? And we do this. So it wasn't a contradictory world. Like, how can you keep my pass on me? And it's like, well, I can do anything I want. I'm liberated and free at the same time so it's like wait wait which one is it though and then that challenge is the rp space that is like wait does this make sense are we making sense what's the agenda here what what are we doing so that's basically it very good but, but if you were just like yeah you're right that sounds amazing and on to the next commercial then that <laughs> would have not been nothing that had to do with no rp i got you you know what i don't know um because I am an independent, I'm independent in thought. And I hear a lot of things on these platforms that don't sound right to me at all. And I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute, what are we actually trying to do? It's just like what you said, wait a minute, should I just go to commercial and keep going or should I question this? But I also feel like I'm like the only one that's questioning it. So I am checking myself. I'm like, wait a minute, you know, and I keep hearing names thrown at me, Manosphere, Red Pill. I'm like, what? I'm not, I didn't do that. You know, I'm just having conversations. I'm just, sharing with you what I feel like works. And I'm also at the same time trying to bring value back to our community, which we say we don't have. But, yeah. you know, I get that we're living in a time where things, are women are sexually liberated and men are frustrated. I understand that too, but guess what else I know? It's not working. <laughs> it's yeah, not working. They are frustrated. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I get it, I see it. So how can I help my men who are our leaders, we need y'all to be in place, but also prepare my women to say, listen, if we don't figure this thing out, y'all going to be uncovered and this ain't going to be good for us because that's not how we built. So yeah. we can't continue with this war because that ain't working for none of us. And it's not working. I actually don't even know how they have sex with each other, actually, <laughs> because like yeah. during the day we hate each other. And then at night, everything's all right. Come on. Is that real? Yeah, I think it's a big tangle. Or like, uh, you know, a dance between the two genders right now. And uh, it's just a re it's like people are addressing this list, right? Like women have their list, what they could look for in a partner, which kind of can be general on some points and very uh, specific to a certain person. And then men have this list and they're being honest about it in the space. It's like, hey, this is really our list. And then now the talk begins. But both parties are not used to it because they do a little different dance when they're not really mating for marriage or mating for a serious relationship. I the agree. other dance is, you know, you lie to me look, the way you look or the way you dress and I lie to you from the things I say. And we're not, we don't really care about this long-term stuff in that aspect of our relationship. So who cares if the guy has a good job and is going to be a father? He had the six pack. Oh, he's a smooth talker. He sound like a PIMP. He's hitting all the buttons. So boom, let's do this. And so that exchange, when it comes to a different level where it's like, hey, what about a husband? 
He doesn't have that, nor was the tango about that, nor was the basis of the relationship was about it. So now it's just really a conversation between the two and people are starting to understand a little bit more about it because it was an unsaid or unspoken about thing, unless we were talking about marriage. Well, um, here over here at SB Nation, um, marriage is an option. And if people are sincere about wanting it, um, I am definitely going to be the example for the woman and teach them how to be that, how to be that wife. And this is not a joke, um, but I'm still saying to men, y'all have your preference. A woman has a sense. She has a sense, scent, and um, you should be able to identify it. If you're not in a place where you can identify it, then you're probably not ready to be a husband. So um, I'm going to continue to teach these women on what they should do. Now, they don't have to do what I say, but again, that should be identifiable. Um, if she is a wife, you should be able to pick up on that also. So, yeah, yeah, that's most gonna definitely. My goal. <laughs> that's going to be my goal. I, I mean, I guess you could say it depends on your outlook of it, but it's a good conversation that both people are having right now and they're able just to address a lot of things back and forth. And right. it's really look for understanding. You know, women sometimes they have to understand that they can ask these questions like, oh my gosh, how did, oh my gosh, how did he say that? Why they glitched or what did they grab their pearls? Like, oh, I can't believe he said pearls, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's funny because if they really look at the playing field, I don't think like people drag it to things like, oh, trauma. Uh, you know, the dad wasn't there, nuclear families, uh, you know, you know, kids get, tend to have studies show that kids tend to have a really good start if they have two parent household or their fathers. So it's a single fathers, you know, so even if it's just a father in the home, they really still have a good you know, chance of being able to do good for themselves. And so we're having this big conversation going back and forth. But women are not need to know or can know that the space was misandriness. Like there's a lot of negative things that are spread about men and fathers, like dudes ain't this, dudes right. ain't that. So all these things that they see in the, in the other space, they're like, how do they have in these words to describe us? It's the same thing in general and mainstream, right? The guy's always a doofus. The man doesn't know anything. He's a bozo in the family. Tell me one TV show you've seen where a man was just strong, smart, accountable, he just held down his, or he wasn't just an idiot, right? He didn't know what to do. He, you know, stay at home mom knew everything he didn't. So there's always been these things that are put into the culture about men in general. Men are all dogs. We cheat at the same rate study show, but women, of course, they're like, men, they're all cheat. They all, they're a bunch of cheaters. Yeah. We're, we're both, we're both humans. Let's be real about it. And so we have this thing conversation that we still need to have. And that's what it's all about. So it seems like a bunch of fighting, right? It seems like a bunch of issues now, but there's dark before the light. So we just need to get through this and we need to reshuffle the culture. And that's what basically is happening. And the conversations happen. So you should look at it as a positive because what we were doing before is just not working. 70% divorce rate, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And with the new times that we're having now, liberated women and et cetera, just where the marketplace is going, right? We need to have new conversations around new relationships. It's not the agricultural era, nor it's the industrial area that much anymore. It's the information and digital area. So we're going to have different relationships, just like everything else in our life is different now. I definitely agree. And I'm for that. You know, um, if nothing else, we can be better people, you know? Yeah, just that's a good part. <laughs> Self-improvement self all the way, right? All the so way around. Definitely... Even if I got to go to another country, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. going to be a better person. So I definitely agree with that. And um, I definitely appreciate you being here and adding to the conversation because it helped me out a lot, helped me out a lot with the RP conversation. But again, I'm going to continue on with my women. I'm going to try to have those classes. There you go. Conversations. And I love people who can actually have a conversation, you know, and we're not beating each other up and arguing back and forth. I have nothing to argue with. I've been married 27 years. What am I arguing for? You know? Yeah, right. Just trying yeah. to shorten the learning curve for him. Like, hey, look, I'm here. I've done it. It's been successful. Hey, I want to share this. Exactly. And so I think that's the same thing with me. You know, I've been economically, you know, I guess you could say good. <laughs> so I just want to share with the same thing with the men. I always had the military. Uh, right. That was a lot of different things. So brotherhood and just going through the crucible and going through war and combat and being a diplomat, all these things have made me be like a very rare type of man. So I just want to share that with other men so that they can see, wow, you know, there's more to life 
than just focusing on the things that they focus on now, video games, whatever it may be. Absolutely. And we definitely need to see that. You know that. We have yeah, to we sure. definitely need to see what men are really made of. You know, you made of Oof. something, you know, get back. Nah, to we, the way they get they're incentivized to be something different, though. Be a clown, mm -hmm. be a joke, not take their future serious, not look to become men. I mean, come on. If you just get on the Internet and do dances and twerk, you're going to get massive amounts of views. Right. As a man. So they're not really incentivized to do the other thing. And so this comes with hard work and dedication. Trey says, problem is, though, respectfully, SB is 27 years out of the dating game. And hold on. And dating in the 90s is completely different than dating today. Let me say this, Trey. And thank you, Trey, for being here. How you doing? You could be possibly right, Trey. But what's work, what's going on now isn't working. So whether um, it's different from what happened in the 90s, it's still not working. So a man and a woman are the same. And marriage has not changed. It all depends on what you yourself actually want, not you, Trey, but what individuals actually want. And a man still has his preference and a woman still needs to have value. So whether we Netflix and chill, go to the strip club or whatever, however you want to see your woman is how you want to see your woman. I agree with that. But women still need to have value and men still need to be men. Men still need to be men. So I guess I'm agreeing with you a little bit. But I think what you're talking about is not working. So let's try something different. And you're right. In the 90s, we actually had dates. We actually went out on dates and had a good time. <laughs> so we used to have dates at the darn car wash. So it was fun. Life was fun then. Y'all are not fun anymore. You're a lot of stress and bust down and chaos and reckless. We're not moving reckless. We didn't move recklessly back then. We got married when it was time to be reckless. So again... You still have your preference on which kind of woman you want. And I agree with that. But I'm going to put put some women out there with value because what I'm hearing, Trey, is even though it is a different time, men still want traditional values in their woman. They still want it. Yeah, they they, they, they really do, man. They, they fighting on the hill for that, for sure, for sure. <laughs> they really I'm do. Sure. I'm not sure what is changing, but I do understand so you. I do. But you see that that's that that's a human thing. I wouldn't really if men were in the other way, it would happen. But, you know, men want the traditional women and the traditional values. And but women want the traditional man for certain things like paying the bills and stuff like this. Right. right. But the problem is that they're not traditional when it comes to a lot of other things that were exchanged back before. So right. for the exchange of a security or provision, I had X, Y, and Z, and you could fill in the blanks, whether that's cooking, cleaning, or whether that's you being nice and feminine, right? right. I don't have a war front in my home. I just go to war when I go outside. <laughs> so that was the exchange. But the tango is like, well, no, I'm not doing that. And don't say I need to do that because I'm woman. And guys are like, okay, respect. But then they feel something. They're like, well, how the heck am I still got to open the door and, and, and pay for these bills, but I can't even get a cooked cereal it's like nah but they just can't get things done and it's just this exchange that hasn't been properly negotiated so that's the big resentment that's the conflict that's the difficulty but men are not like oh let's make new terms they really just want this like hey i'll do everything i'll still open the door i'll still take a bullet for you i still want to do this for you just give me x y and z and it's like two or three things on the list it's really not a lot right and trey is saying we make uh we I think we spent a lot of time trying to make it like it was rather than adjusting to what it is today. Trey, mm. again, you create your own life. If you want it to be whatever it is today, whatever that is, it's good. It's on you. But I'm hearing more men say they want traditional and you know what tradition means. It comes from something that came before you. So, and I'm hearing women say they want, they would love to have some women. Now, we ain't talking about the city girls now. Some women want traditional men, just like um, obstacles to op opportunities just said. They want men to be in certain positions. So the problem is the influence on women is not giving them the part that they're supposed to play. And that's the part I'm playing. I'm saying, hey, let's get back in order because we want these men to be these type of men. So that's where I'm coming in at because the men have already said what they will are willing to do. So again, it's not going to be all men. It has never been all men and it's never been all women. There will be some men out there that do not want to be married. And there will be some women out there that are willing to be side chicks. 
and City Girls. We already know that. I've always said that this club is an exclusive club and not everybody wants those benefits. But if you do, then it has to be done a certain way in order to be successful. And I ain't said nothing about happy. I said successful and long term. And that's the most that you can ask because we're different people. It's it's a growing process, but it's definitely life is good. You know, so that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. Life yeah, is still good. It. So, and, and I, and I, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was definitely saying too. Uh, passport bros would be kind of a small example for what people know what to be about. Um, it's just where guys are like, okay, how can I get this relationship? It's not available um, in their reach, wherever they may be in the United States. So they just go overseas and see if people are willing to do that. And since I've been overseas for way longer than most people, I would say even the girl that I had had in my life, she was Polish. She had the same thing. Like her mom was just did certain things and her dad did certain things, even though she still worked. And her mindset was different around it, too. Just like your mindset could be different around money. Money's bad. It's the root of all evil. But she had a, a narrative that was like, well, I love to cook for you. I just like to make you happy. Kind of like even dudes be like, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. So she's like, by me doing this, I love to see you happy when you eat my food. So no matter if it's rain, hail, sleet, or snow, I'm going to make sure you get that. So you're just prepared to go out and fight your battle, right? And so therefore, that's where it came from. And of course, my value was different. I gave her, you know, a different outlook when it came to money and her relationship and behavior with money. So I was a role model in that aspect, too. So I just think like people go overseas to look for those values. If they don't get them just where they're at, they're like, OK, where is it set up like that around the world? And it is set up like that in most of the world because people are trying to survive. Uh, it's very different around the rest of the world. People are still attached to those gender relationships because of <laughs> their close relationship to the bottom, meaning like being homeless and not being able to survive. So if you're going to Brazil and all these other places, they haven't had changed relationships because the economies haven't changed to our level, right? We could just finance a house without even putting money down. Right. Most planet is never like that. You got to save up all your life. My granny been saving. Then, then my family had to save and we bought one plot of land out in the village. So that's most of the world. So the relationships are different. So I think that that's really what it's getting out. Yeah. And your experiences are your experiences. But, you know, um, I've been here a while today and I definitely appreciate the, you know, let me just say one thing. Miss Miss Thompson, you didn't come up today. Now, I don't know if you're trolling or if you're sincere with the things that you are putting in the uh, comment section. But I need you to have an open mind, you know. Um, you know, have an open mind, ask questions if it's something that you don't understand. I don't like labeling people or a whole group of people for something that I really don't know about. And I'm not going to even call it out like that, but I appreciate that you're, you're not trolling. Well, Miss, Miss Belinda, why don't you come up sometime, not today, and then tell us why you feel the way you do and, and allow these people who you're speaking of to ask you questions to why you think that way. Because I don't want to put anybody in a box because I don't understand them. And, and that's not how we have conversations. Oh, not to nonsense. Oh, okay, so you're going to be the creator and the, um, the author and the finisher, Miss Belinda. Oh, wow. Okay. So anyway, thank you so much, Obstacles to Opportunity. I appreciate you. Make sure you come back again. Comment section, I love you. Miss Belinda, I would love to talk to you more because I cannot believe that you are the author and the finisher. <laughs> well, I appreciate you though. And I know you'll be back. I hope you'll be back because we definitely want to have this conversation. Um, tomorrow, I got to let y'all know, I'm going to be here at six o'clock PM Eastern time with TLA. Y'all know what I mean by that, right? The lead attorney. He and I will be here having a conversation. I need all y'all to be here tomorrow at 6 PM. We're going to be doing some conflict resolution. We're going to still be solutioning. Does that make sense? Solutioning, is that a word? We're going to be here talking, having conversation. Miss Belinda, I would love to have you here. Come back to SB Nation. Got any questions? I may even be able to ask him. All of you that are here now, be sure you come back tomorrow. Me and TLA, we're going to have a good conversation. We're going to be talking about marriage, um, child support, prenups, um, all that stuff we always talk about. Y'all know. Just come back and take a look at us tomorrow over here at SB Nation. Y'all know we five stars. And tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, myself and the lead attorney will be here. Y'all have a good night. And I'll see you soon. Bye.
You want the love, I don't got it. You screaming, stay, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different with distance we roam in the zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. Instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts they too are scared to usher off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here away. I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up to my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars We were poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist the spliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reasons So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't say No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.